Hey everyone, Cynix here, and as I mentioned before starting my little contest, I want to do a little bit of a documentation of the whole thing. It's just like a little journal so I can chart the progress, let you in on some behind the scenes um, action as it is. First of all, I am completely blown away by the amount of people that have submitted something for this contest. Um, I was expecting maybe like a hundred entries and we've been getting like a hundred a day. So I think we're probably up to a thousand or it's at least it's definitely going to be a thousand by the time it's over. So that's crazy. That's a lot of stuff. It's uh, completely changed how I plan to do things because, well, not quite. I mean, I'm still going to narrow it down to 16, but that just got so much more difficult. Um, and if you're wondering, why don't you just let more people in? Um, well, it's mainly because if I do, I calculated that 16 would just be the most effective way to make this thing not drag on for months and months. I figure with 16, uh, the estimate is it'll roughly be over, you know, within a month from the start of this whole process to the end of it. As you can see, the Discord has been having a regular voice chat with everyone sharing screens. I had to make two voice channels because it was so busy. It's just been very fun, very active, and I'm excited for that because, you know, some people were asking, well, maybe you should just leave it open as like a, just a new Discord channel. But honestly, no, I'm more excited because people are this active and this is just going to be a temporary server that's only up for a month. Um, but the exciting part is that, like I said, this is going to be like a little little summer camp. We're going to do this every single year. So I feel like it's more fun that way. The fact that it's not permanent and the fact that you just have to enjoy it for a little bit. Anyway, so I'm going to try to do a little vlog update probably twice a week. That sounds about right. Um, just, just to compile them all together and then at the end of this all, I'll make a video out of it. And uh, I've learned a couple things and I've had a couple new ideas. For one thing, um, once we get to the next phase, which will be, just be random prompts every single day until we narrow it down to one person. Um, but I decided, oh, it'd be, be way more fun to get prompts from other people. So yesterday I was typing away, uh, messaging up as many random different artists as I could online um, and just getting prompts from people. So I got some prompts from Anthony Jones, Robot Pencil, and I got some prompts from uh, Sykra. I got some prompts from Ethan back here. I got some prompts from just all, all kinds of classic uh, people you will recognize. Um, so that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, the main other thing, obviously, because I'm super overwhelmed by the number of entries, I've just been trying to save um, all the kind of standout ones each day into a little folder on my computer. So that way when it gets to the final day, I don't have to scroll through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of entries, uh, but I'll still probably just have to take like a hundred entries and uh, you know, I can narrow them down to 16. Let's actually take a look at some of the entries. All right, so you can see here, we have the entries area. There are tons and tons and tons. This doesn't even go to the top. I think these are all just from yeah, these are all just from today. So there are literally tons from just the past 12 hours. That is crazy. And what is this one? Uh huh. Okay. So yeah, as you can see, we have a lot of interesting entries. Okay. Yeah, no, that n the less said about this one, the better. All right. Well, I think that's about it for today. I'm going to check back in once I'm doing my final uh, little tally and picking my top 16. I'll let you in on that process too. Well, it is officially Monday after the deadline, which means all submissions have been cut off. By the way, I want to thank Lanku for that awesome little animation. It was definitely on the honorable mentions uh, for candidates this year. Uh, but anyway, speaking of that, man, uh, submissions are over and I had over 1,000 entries. It was brutal today. 
I gotta be honest, trying to narrow it down to 16 was ridiculous. There were so many good ones, it really just came down to, I don't know, random various things. Um, because, yeah, it's tough. It's tough when you have that many good ones to narrow it down. And on any given day, it could have been a different set of 16, but we got our 16. I'm just gonna go with it. You gotta just move forward. You gotta just trust in it. So anyway, yeah, the, the Discord is pretty wild at the moment. There's a lot of dissent, a lot of rebellion brewing among the Washout Alley, sowing the seeds of of contempt for me, um, but no, it's good. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. A lot of the people in there are still motivated to stay here and keep drawing, so uh, it's been good. The voice chat's still active, which is awesome, but I'm gonna share some of the amazing entries I had. Um, so there's all kinds of things in here. I got, you know, things that are just, you know, nice perspectives and things. This one's by Kazaline, uh, 3TS. Oh man, I could go through all of them. AJ, I can just click on random spots and find all kinds of good stuff. This one's nice. And a freckled shorty. Um, yeah, Aryan Pick, this one also. There's so, there's so many that are like out of quality where, you know, it could easily make it. Um, just all kinds of cool stuff going on here. Uh, what is Borby? And that's very colorful. Um, so, like I said, these are all in that pile of 100 that I had initially saved. Um, Bergio, yeah, just a big, big variety in here. I've got things that are just based on interesting, unique character designs, such as this one by Cohen Commer. Um, just, just a little bit of everything. Um, I mean, I guess I can just like kind of rapid fire through some of this awesome stuff we have in here, because it's just, it's just, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Oh, that's, I like that. That's a really nice painting. Like I said, anything could have could have potentially made it. Look at that graphic design. Um, this one also like amazing, amazing stuff all around. Um, sorry, you can't see all the names. I'll I'll try to mention some. That was Dodger Div, Disa. Yeah. Um, it's hard. It's hard to go over everything. I saved I saved some of them at a smaller size. That's not to say I didn't look at them at a full size. That was just my accident when I was saving them. Um, but. You know, I saw them all at their full size. Don't worry, I saw everything. Um, yeah, like look at that little little fake magazine kind of effect. Um, that's by Aiden. Um, this one's great as well. You know, once again, maybe the the reason some of them didn't get picked isn't for like art skill or anything like that. Like this one's aesthetically extremely pleasing. It's just, uh, I guess, costuming or something. I don't know. I, like I said, just gotta kind of have to make decisions. Um, luckily, uh, Ahmed Aldori was nice enough to help me sort through some of the final selections. So that saved me a lot of struggle and time because, you know, obviously when there's so much good stuff just kind of piling in all the time, um, it's, it's really hard to just sort through like, look at this one. This could have been there. Yeah, it's awesome. So, uh, a couple, couple honorable mentions that I want to go over. Uh, Inkyu Bibble. I think that's, how you say. they did a real sculpture. That's awesome. And, you know, super impressive. This one, look at this. I love this character. This is great personality. Um, just good, solid rendering. All that good stuff all kinds of things it's wild. Oh, they're so awesome okay um so yeah uh i just want to say while i while i just click through these uh you guys are amazing you guys are awesome uh you guys did way more just amazing things than i would have ever dreamed or expected the sheer quantity and quality uh was just wild to me it was like just more than anything i could have dreamed of so thank you so much. And I'm just really glad to see this much art created in just one week. This is one week. We have a thousand pieces of art added to the collective art world um, just from this one week and all kinds of friends being made and all kinds of just awesome advancements um, and personal growth being done. So uh, great success so far. Hopefully things don't fall apart and turn into some apocalyptic nightmare as as things get more deeper into the competition. Um, but yeah, there's just so much, so much. Cause look at this, this is beautiful. Um, so yeah, there's 
there, there's so much. This is all, once again, just things that were piled in my little little bank of 100. And even even that was difficult, narrowing it down from 1,000 to 100. Um, you know, there were a lot where I was like, oh, you know, that could maybe be in there. Because um, they're just so, so good everywhere. Okay. I'll try to stop gushing over things. I really like this one, by the way. <laughs> I can't stop. Never mind. This is by Riceberg. Um, so, anyway. You know. Oh, wait, no. I'm not going to go back to that. Um, yeah. Anyway. So I can, I can scroll through this forever, you know, once again. I'll probably just be looking. Hey, wait a minute. I do want to point one thing out. This piece, this one right here, you see this? You see this, um person that's obviously pretty great at confident lines but it seems to be making slightly awkward like purposefully stiff decisions this is Ahmed Ahmed tried to sneak one by on me he tried to just see oh I wonder if I just kind of try to sneak one that doesn't look like my art uh, if I can get into the finals well well no you're found out we know it's you he admitted it um, this is it's it's just funny to me to see his attempt obviously the waffle was a dead giveaway um only only a med would put a waffle in there um but yeah um it's interesting to see someone try to make their style less noticeable and like try to appear less professional than they are which i guess just means a stiff posture and some strange proportions on the face um but yeah did anyone else catch that this was by him? Probably not. I think he did a pretty good job fooling everyone. Um, yeah, so, so much good stuff. This one, this one was great. Oh man, I like that costume. Okay, good rendering here. Mm, 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 mm. Just wonderful stuff all around. Uh, so much talent across the board. Why are you guys so good? Um, what is that, Yev? Go away, Yev, okay. Can't have you in here. Um, so anyway, uh, that was awesome. I had to narrow it down even further. And you might be thinking, wow, these are all like finalist level quality. Um, but actually I did. And that, by the way, if you didn't see yours up there, there are way more that I didn't get a show. And there's just like all sorts of them just, you know, stuck in here at different parts. Um, so, you know, there's all, there's all kinds of things. Anyway, moving along. There were a full set of I like third like basically double thirty five something like that of what I considered finalists. Um, so that's where you get all these. I'm just going to show all of them because might as well honorable mentions. You can say these are the runners up. I don't know if it'll make you feel better or worse knowing that you kind of very closely almost just just barely didn't make it in just randomly. Um, had this lovely animation by Planta. Um, I obviously I was just easily impressed by the fact that it's an animation and it's moving. And this one was super close to being in there. Um, you know, it was it could have been number seventeen or eighteen or somewhere in the top twenty. Um, I just really like it. It's very appealing to me, just the shape confidence and everything, and the fact that it's animated. You know, look at that. That's cool. Uh, we have this one by a seven. Also one that was right on the border. Um, very nice looking. It has that kind of a little bit of a Ross Draws vibe. Um, but yeah, cool cool stuff. As you can see, they just get more and more. As, as we get to the top, they just have more and more interesting qualities. Um, yeah, this one, very, very professional looking. Nice presentation. There were a lot that were just like solid, good character sheets. Um, so that one was by Beth Gilbert. Oh, it says it. And this one was by Bobo Lip. Bobo. That's a pretty good signature. I'm down for that signature. Weird little garlic thing going on here. Um, save this one a little bit small by D. Kielsilizic. D. Kielsilizic? I can't say that. But good details. This one was also, I guess they were all close at this point. I don't know why I'm saying anything. Um, by... Edo, what a no, do, do, no, art, on art. Um, very, very solid piece. Great design here by Ed Pan, Ed Panepio. Um, this one, also, okay, I'm, I'm gonna really stop saying that. I'm just stop tempted to say, this one was so close every time. Um, but these were all, these were all very close. 
Uh, I really like the costume design. Definitely an honorable mention just for like feeling like a cohesive world, nice uh, clothing design. Um, really solid. Even the, even the shoes are interesting. They have a male and a, a, a female version of the outfit. Um, so just really great on the costume design, clothing design front on that one. Um, good presentation as well. Uh, this one, I, I originally, yeah, I had this one being like, oh, this will definitely make it. Uh, but it got so competitive. I love this bird here. Uh, good shape design. That one's by Flavortown. This one by Funk Monk. Wonderful colors. It's good, good fun to look at piece. Really like that one. Uh, another honorable mention for costume design, just straight up, like, I really like this costuming. Uh, this is by Jay, J-E-I. Um, just, just love the very simple yet effective costume. Um, distinctive, nice. I just, I just thought it was very pleasing uh, to look at costume-wise. So really good job there. Uh, this one by uh, Joyce, Joycey, um, Juicy Joyce. This one is great it was it was tough tough decision i couldn't tell if it was my own bias because i know this person that was messing it up but nonetheless um very solid very solid looking i love the mixture of different costumes nice cohesive palette um was was definitely on right on that border top 20 for sure uh another another great one good characters good poses fun costume so basically all of these ones in this top part all have like a really good both presentation and design and they have a good costume so it's like a little bit of everything thrown in there um which is what i was looking for a nice mix of all things this one looks like justin gordon got this one by mamoon i feel like they they watched my recent video it's got that different hair things but nice chrome metal very unique costume a lot of the costumes you know you run into a lot of shared concepts but this one felt nice and distinctive uh hey this is this one was just beautiful i just want to see more of this artist i don't know how to follow them because their name is just may like m-e-h-h-h-h-h -H 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 -H, at least that's what they used um but this is the type of artist that i think would be awesome to follow just very confident shapes and lines cool character sheet very very fun mev e um this is also, it's, you know, this one's a little bit like maybe on the quick side, but looks just so kind of appealing from a simple color and shape standpoint. Uh, patchy pillow, awesome as well. Uh, love this whole kind of three-eyed thing going on here. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sunya had this uh, illustration that they did very early on in the competition. It was like day two or something. Um, and I really like just the details going on. There's so many good details on this. Can you guys see them? Yes, you can. Um, let me just shrink this down just a little bit. There you go. Uh, Sunya Art, give them a follow, you know? Go check out the stuff. Uh, we got Sean here. Um, that's, I think that size is, I can zoom in a little bit. All right, so just, you know, solid, solid looking stuff all around. Fun costumes, good presentation. Uh, this one, you, so you can tell there's some people that went more for an illustration, some people that went more for a character sheet. Um, I like all of them. You know, there's no real rule uh, for this first submission. So like I tried to balance it out, have some from both sides and get a little bit of everything. I really like this one for the just colors and perspective stuff. Um, we have this one by Snack. Also feels very ambitious. I like any piece that feels like they're kind of pushing themselves and they're kind of reaching more ambitious levels. Um, so this one was uh, also early on in the week, but, you know, has a nice kind of ambitious feel to it. And, you know, it's got the costumes. Got it. Got a little bit of everything. Anytime there's like a nice costume and a nice painting or a nice design as well, uh, you got to love it. So frog guy, good costume. This one, just great illustrate. Good color, good value, good lighting, good composition. All that good stuff. Um, the weaknesses are really just in a little bit of anatomy and the costuming is maybe a little bit on the safe side, but uh, I really like that one. It's really nice looking. Uh, Sketchy Ginger. Um, yeah, this one was 
Also, I enjoyed this person because they were active in the voice chat. Um, and you know, the, the results are good. They, they got some good stuff in here. Um, it just became way too, you know, hyper competitive that it became so hard to pick people. Uh, but yeah, I really like this one. They took feedback well, they adjusted things. Um, it did a lot of, a lot of good stuff like that. Um, so I think they're gonna, they're gonna definitely do well in the art world. Got Umber Art. This one feels very much in the spirit of Ray underscore 17, um, that amazing artist. It has that nice chromatic prismatic effect in all the shadows and lights and everything, um, which I just love that stuff. Uh, so that one was really cool as well by Umber Art. Um, uh, Vassarus did this one, which had an awesome, you know, ship in the background. Uh, it just feels very ambitious. Obviously, there's room to, you know, kind of step up certain parts of the rendering and, you know, my, mild things. But I love the ambition here. I love the costume stuff. Very simple, very effective. Um, just good stuff all around. And Verlocky, who had a very unique take on the costuming um, and the aesthetic, which, you know, I appreciate. I appreciate anything that feels, like, distinct to that person. And they went, like, in a different direction. Um, so those were the, in the top 30 something. Um, and then we have our top 16, which I will quickly share with you guys. Um, first one we picked was Samuel Amar art. Um, just good illustration, very ambitious, um, has, you know, good character stuff going on. feels like that classroom setting, uh, could have been a little more formal with the costuming stuff, but you know. It feels like they're in a casual kind of hangout time. Um, so very ambitious perspective and everything. Um, so just, just a good piece. We had this one by Swolf, Swolf Chan, Maddie. Um, and they uh, just, you know, great chrome effects. Good, like, character turnaround sheet. Um, you know, minor, minor issues, I would say, with anatomy and the face and everything. But it felt like they were pushing themselves uh, hard, so, you know, just kind of want to see where they're going to go in the competition. Had this one by Anna that was just adorable. At first I was like a little hesitant because I'm like, this maybe this is just like their normal stuff and they're just kind of trying to slap the logo on there. But um, at the end, you know, you got to give it to them. I, I don't know what, you know, what their normal stuff is, but I can't, I can't try to judge anything based on that. I just got to look at the piece and this piece is adorable. It's wonderful. It makes me happy. Aside from the name, Mr. Waffles, we don't... This is a pancake channel. I can't mention that enough. This is a pancake channel. We do pancakes here. We don't do waffles. You want waffles, go to Ethan Becker. Go to Ahmed Aldori. Go wherever else. We are pancakes here. You know? I don't care, I don't care if that costs me half my subscribers. It's just the fact of the matter. Um, you gotta be true to who you are. You can't, you can't pretend to be something you're not. Um, anyway, we had awfully savvy uh, Sabrina Russell. This one, uh, just super cute. I like the costume. I wanted to get at least one in there that was traditional, and this one just stood out to me as just being very fun traditional piece. Um, so I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, had this one by Blink. Just nice character interaction. Not many, you know, character interactions. Those are very difficult. Uh, to have multiple characters and kind of be trying to sell a subtle narrative. Um, but nice lighting all around, of course. Nice presence and just like nice illustrated piece. Um, that's my Blink. We have this one by Tehef. I know this isn't the final version. I forgot to save the final one for this little presentation. Um, but just nice lit lighting. They, didn't, they kind of managed to keep their shapes, um, you know, simple enough, appealing enough feels like they're going in the right direction, and that's what I like to see. Um, this one by FDB is just really good control over subtle values and subtle hue shifts. Um, like this, in these, some of these clothing elements just look so, so nice and clean. Um, even the skin tones and stuff, yeah. Um, so really, really solid. Maybe a little bit more work to be done with just subtle anatomy things, but I think... Uh, that, that's looking great. Uh, Franco here, maybe this is probably a little bit of bias. They're from they're from my server. I am aware of Franco. They're an active artist person, but 
I just, you know, I like the presentation, the rendering on everything just feels so nice, crisp and appealing. I don't know why the, this jaw is just so, I don't know, the character itself is a little bit, a little bit on the strange side in terms of like, I'm not sure what mood or anything. Like it's a little bit all over the place. Um, I'm not, I don't have any feel for their personality or character or traits or anything. Um, but that's fine. Reasonable costume, a little bit on the safe side, but once again, had to, had to get, uh, some bias, one bias pick in there. <laughs> no, it, it's great. I think it would have made it anyway. Uh, McAnew is just awesome graphic appeal, very fun looking, it's cool stuff. Um, the first person that we announced when we did the little cadets was this one by Knee Kitty San. Um, just, this piece is just awesome, you know, this is very professional. Um, I don't really like, I hope this person is gonna get a job in the industry because like, I feel like, oh, I would, I would hire this person if I was at a studio or something and they're ready to go. Look at all this stuff. Nice presentation. Awesome design. I love the, even some of the details are really just nice and appealing. Um, so this, in my opinion, I didn't really rank these, but this was like the, the top entry. If I had to, if I had to select one. So congrats. Number one. Um, good job. Out of, out of the thousand, this one was uh, my top pick. Uh, so yeah, that one's really fun. Uh, also this one by Overgang, dude, really just strong design appeal, you know, effective shapes, confident in its lighting, confident in its just appeal. Um, really good stuff. This one by Sarah, also just great lighting. There's so many ones in here that are just great lighting, very gorillas inspired design. Um, but I even like the little continuity with the little fly robot, it's just, it's wonderful. We had some weird stuff. We had this one by uh, Spider Layer. Uh, Footloose, a fan favorite. You gotta love this character. Who who wouldn't love this character? It's delightful. Um, yeah, so there's like ones that are in here for both, you know, just humor, entertainment, being just kind of interesting, a little bit of everything. I needed, I needed a bit of, just a little, little touch of everything in the top, top 16. I know there's a lot of similarity in terms of like being high rendered and nice values and colors, but did try to just have some mix in style at least. Um, so that one was great. This one by Storrs. Look at that arm. Those are some delicious arm muscles going on there. Um, yeah, get excited. Very good. I watched them do this one in the chat. Uh, this one by True Omen. Once again, great angular, confident lines and shapes. Um, it's nice looking, solid, solid, professional quality stuff. And finally, this one by Weow, Weow, I'm not sure how to pronounce that name, um, but very, very distinct, very memorable in its design. Look at this robot. I don't know if it's a robot. Look at this owl thing. I would, you can make it just on this bird alone, but then you have this awesome character, um, with awesome costuming and just super, super nice. Uh, details everywhere. So really strong stuff. Another professional caliber entry going on here. Um, if not professional, then at least, you know, at that stage where they should be getting a job somewhere. Come on now. Um, so yeah, those are all of those entries. There are so much amazing stuff going on. I am blown away. Um, I hope you enjoyed looking at them with me. This video is probably way too long now. Um, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to condense this and shrink it down a lot because um, I could just look at all this stuff forever. Um, I'm very excited uh, to see where things are gonna go. I don't know if you're watching this video and you haven't seen the results because this won't be posted until later. Who do you think's gonna win? What's your money on? I kind of feel like uh, uh, I mean I'm obviously very curious to see where New Kitty goes. Uh, I feel I feel like True Omen is going to be a big contender. Um, they all might be. I don't even know. I, I honestly, I think it could go anywhere. There's so many good ones. Uh, very curious to see what uh, Sabrina will be doing. Very curious. Actually, I'm curious to see what all of them will be doing. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's an exciting time. Um, I have to get prepared 
for our first of the 24 hour challenges and we'll see how long this whole thing takes. So I'll be checking back in throughout the week. Once again, a couple times a week, I'll give you updates on who got knocked out, uh, who's still in it, what kind of art they're making and all that good stuff. This is gonna be a feature length film by the time I'm done with it. Um, so yeah, look at all these, look at all these people. Happy birthday, Samuel. It was their birth, they just happened randomly to be their birthday when they got selected. Um, yeah, all right, anyway, I'm gonna wrap it up. We'll see what happens. Let's check back in a few days. Hey everyone, it is roughly, oh, two weeks later. Yeah, it's been a while, um, but there's kind of a reason for that. Uh, after a few days of doing this assignment giant contest thing, I realized that um, these people are not gonna go down easy. This is gonna be a fight, this is gonna be a slugfest, and these people are in it for the long run. So there's no point doing updates every few days because this is gonna go forever. No, it's not gonna go forever. Hopefully it will eventually come to an end. But yeah, I thought I'd space these out a bit more. Uh, so I'm gonna be going over the first 10 assignments. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot of assignments. There's already been like another thousand pieces of art made just for the assignments, um, counting the cadets and also the people in the follow along because there's a lot of people that are just following along on their own, which is awesome to see. Um, so let's just dive into it and I'll let Longku kick this off with assignment number one, return to Candy Island. So just so you know, I'm going to be taking a quick look at some of the awesome things that came out of the follow along from people that aren't even in the actual competition. Um, and we're going to do every assignment by taking a look at those real fast. And then we'll dive into the actual 16 people in the contest, see who can get down to the last man standing. So let's take a look. And I'm just going to be sharing a handful of the most notable ones that stood out to me. Um, so look, we even have a piece by Med Aldori in here. Uh, he wanted to get in on the fun, and don't worry, he'll keep getting in on the fun. This will be a recurring thing. Uh, but this was his Candy Island. We also had an awesome one by Beth Gilbert, who you'll definitely also be seeing a lot of in these honorable mentions. Um, Delica, also doing awesome stuff. Uh, so you can see uh, Dragon Warrior, all these people. These people are just doing awesome art, uh, just as following along, and they've been making art pretty much every day along with the main contest. Uh, so Dragon Warrior, definitely a staple. You're gonna be seeing him a lot in these honorable mentions. Uh, same goes for Enix. And uh, we got Frost here. I don't think we've seen Frost as much, but definitely some fun stuff in there. Kind of has those Marco Bucci color vibes. Uh, this one's by Johanna Bell, Marie, Rain Strive. Uh, Rosa V. I'm just kind of trying to go through them because there's so many. Shiro, uh, Sikei art? I don't actually know how to say that one, but that's an awesome atmospheric uh, giant gummy bear. And we got this one by Tatch. Uh, Yukim art. And yeah, that's pretty, I don't, don't worry about the Chinese text everywhere. Uh, but yeah, there were so many good follow-alongs. I'm just picking a handful. There's hundreds and hundreds more. Uh, but I just wanted to share those real fast. Now let's jump into the actual competition. So here we go. We have Return to Candy Island. You're going to be getting to know these artists pretty well over the course of this giant feature length video. Um, so FDB, definitely a solid contender. Uh, and I was really concerned right off the start. I'm like, I'm going to give them an environment. Some of them will probably drop out and uh, it'll probably shake them up because they did a character to get into this thing. But Clearly environments, most people that do characters aren't great at environments, right? Well, apparently wrong because there's all kinds of awesome stuff going on. And this was just the warm up. This is just people kind of feeling things out. Um, but we started to get a nice clear view on where all these people would be going. Anna is a continual favorite in most of these assignments each day. Um, just very fun style, very cool stuff. Uh, Franco, 
definitely had one of my favorite candy islands. Uh, same with Weow. And uh, Storse does good. The kitties is pretty good. Macanoo, I like that one. Nice thing. Um, anyway, I'm not going to spend all my time going over each one in depth. I just want to give you a quick look and tell you who got the strike that day. Um, so for this very first challenge, I gave the strike to Blink. There were a lot of good ones. Um, unfortunately, I just felt like... Uh, let me go find it real fast. I just got a little bit flat compositionally. You can see how each of the different elements all are in unique spots, and there's not quite enough overlap or balance in the composition. Um, so minor things like that. Anyway, let's dive in to assignment number two. Katunga dance! It's a sensation. Oh, fantastic! Wow, exciting! NEC Dynamic Sound CD500. And thank you once again, Longu, for providing that awesome little animation. Uh, so for this one, the prompt was smell for the frog cat. Uh, so we have a lot of frog cats. I really like this one by Div, just because these uh, ears kind of have that frog eye thing. I just thought it was a great concept. And of course, we got one by Dragon Warrior here. Uh, Aaron Zaya. I just love these sketches. So much personality in those. Got this one by Haim. Him, Haim, I'm not sure how, quite how to say that. I'm sorry, I'm just going to butcher everyone's name. Johanna Bell again. That's just adorable. Um, Marie, uh, also, you know, there's going to be, once again, a lot of repeating names because they're just killing it. Uh, but I love those sketches, even those nice little quick color value study thing. Um, this one by Mia Tai. That's just a nice little furless hyperallergic. <laughs> Uh, naked Cat Frog. Anyway, here's one by Ozen. That's, once again, there's so many adorable ones. I love seeing the creature designs because they just look how cute they all are. This one's by Rainstrive. We got this one by Rosa V. Um, Tim Morrow. That's a good name. Uh, Toku 2D. And that is our last one. So, once again, amazing stuff in the honorable mentions, the follow-alongs but let's go and see how our actual contestants are doing. And I forgot to mention, but at the end of the first day, we did lose one contestant. We lost to half. Sadly, uh, they just couldn't get their internet connection and computer stuff uh, working enough to get something in on that first day. So we had to, he had to get dropped. I loved seeing his entry, you know, it's unfortunate, um, but luckily it keeps the time frame on this whole thing down a little bit. Um, so that first day, we went down to 15, um, and we had one strike. On the next day, you can see all these beautiful, beautiful cat frogs. Uh, this is really where I started to feel the different styles. So we have Sabby, and she always does this hyper cute stuff. And I, I don't know, I'm a sucker for it because it's a different style than my own, but I just like seeing this cute stuff. Um, a lot of good stuff all around. FDB is always bringing in very professional looking kind of structured values and colors. Look at that subsurface scattering. It's delightful. Um, Sarah, always very reliable as well. Um, spider layer usually just brings in the crazy fun stuff, which is delightful to have. Uh, Truman really pushing himself hard every day. So I think he's made a, a lot of good improvement over the course of all of these assignments. And it's been fun to watch that. Anna, once again, stuff is awesome. Easily uh, in love with all of these kind of nice shapes and colors. Um, so a lot of different good concepts, Macanu. Uh, Nikitisan, once again, this is where you started realizing, okay, Nikitisan is like doing finished illustration splash art stuff in a single day. Uh, they are a force to be reckoned with. Um, and you will keep seeing that. Um, we had this one by Storrs, Weo, Blink, uh, Franco. Yeah, so for this second assignment, I actually gave the strike uh, to uh, Storrs here. Um, it's not that it was horrible by any means. It's just a slightly strange camera angle, a little bit awkward. 
um, just didn't quite have the same personality as some of the other ones. The other ones feel more distinctive, but nonetheless, it was another solid day. We didn't lose anyone on this day, um, but let's move on to day number three. So day number three was all about a prop design and it was Into Malice, the legendary insect sword. Uh, so a lot of great follow alongs. We got this one by Alex. Love those colors, nice design. Uh, oops, skipped one. Beth Gilbert coming in strong, nice presentation. Uh, this one by Dragon Warrior, just, I just love this one. This is such a great, just awesome, memorable design. Um, has that kind of beetle aspect to it, anyway. A lot of cool insect swords. Aaron Zaya, K Sauce. That's that's K. Good old K. Always doing awesome stuff. Improving a lot this year. Uh, Serenth. That that's just lovely. I love these colors. Great control over those colors, and just that feels like a like something you might see in a movie. Um, same thing with Touch. Very ornate. Very delicate. Enjoyable. Uh, Terrence M. Whoa, this one's giant. I must have saved the biggest file I could find. Uh, this one's by Toku2D. I think I saved it so big because look at these details. That is delightful. All these insects crawling around. Oof, I love that. That that just came out great. So good job, Toku2D. Uh, this one by Vasris. And that's it. So let's jump into the actual contestants. All right, so Into Malice. I just like the name. You know, it's like entomology plus malice. It's a legendary insect sword. I like naming things. It's just it's what I enjoy. Anyway, uh, you know, we've had them do environments. We've had them do creatures. Now we're going to make them do props. You know, clearly one of these is going to make them stumble, right? Uh, but no. Overgang dude. I just love this amber insect stuck in amber sword. That's a lovely one. Uh, so this has got FDB, Awfully Savvy, Samuel, Anna, Anna. I was not expecting her to have a strong prop, you know, I don't know. I was just like, well, they do these character things so well. Um, but I really like that nice, clean presentation and good shape design. Uh, we've got this one by Sarah. True Omen came on strong with this one. I like that. Um, in Swolf Chan, also one of, one of Swolf Chan's best uh, pieces in the competition, in my opinion. Just a nice design, nice idea. Um, and all these other ones. So let's see, what else do we got? Weeow, I love this little beehive one. Uh, Franco, killing it with this one. Very, very subtle, but definitely has that insect vibe with the little, the little kind of fuzziness. Um, and Blink had a great entry as well in this one. I really like that one by Blink. Um, but unfortunately, I did have to give the strike to Nikitty san Nikitty san one of the no doubt strongest contenders, uh, but just this presentation, that bright kind of blinding saturation really took away from the design and compared to the rest, the design was just a little bit simple. They did have some fun color experiments, but overall the silhouette of it was not as exciting as some of these other ones. Let's jump into assignment number four. I'm just gonna say jump in a lot. So assignment number four was actually a narrative prompt. So I just gave them a prompt and they had to make a narrative illustration based on it. So the prompt I gave them was Light Harvest. So here we have a Beth Gilbert. This looks like a magic card. Someone's harvesting the light from this person's eyes. Great job, Beth. And then we have this one by Bo, Bo Olderts. It's a nice little thing. Looks like they're doing experiments on this little 
Sailor Moon, <laughs> Magical Transformation Girl. Uh, this this one by Bobo Lip. I I have been enjoying a lot of the stuff Bobo Lip has been doing as well. Um, here was Delica once again, and Funk Monk, and finally Nitao. So a lot of great entries. I only saved a handful. I probably could have saved a lot more, but I didn't want to overwhelm the videos. So let's get into the contestants and see how they fared. We have starting it off once again strong with this piece by Anna. Uh, simple but effective, you know? Play to your strengths. Um, and I liked a lot of the different stuff. A lot of people were trying, kind of experimenting at this point. I feel like trying to trying to find out what style they wanted to carry forth and all these things. Uh, but there's a lot of interesting stuff. I really like this one by Blink. Um, it just had a nice simple effective value structure it felt good um you can see what they were going for light harvest they're using the this little ufos light thing to harvest all the all the crops um which was a great idea uh, over gang had this very narrative composition very epic feeling feels like a movie poster um and so let's see yeah nikitty always good uh, we out actually don't show me that one, uh, but stores great 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 this one we out added a little animation so Okay, well apparently I broke it. I don't know Discord is acting weird uh, But this one they added little animations to the candles. I'll just show you the non-animated one There we go. Okay, so this one was probably my favorite of the bunch for this assignment I uh, just love the focus on lighting, even though they photo bashed the background. How dare they? No, that's fine. Um, but yeah, just a nice, simple, effective narrative composition. This feels good. It's like looking at it. Uh, but anyway, uh, the strike this time, unfortunately, I gave it to True Omen. Um, not that it was anything horrible, um, but just some of the kind of more airbrushy effects and some of the stuff just wasn't melding as well as it could but anyway let's move on now assignment number five is probably the weirdest one but also the one i was looking forward to the most because i gave them an abstract art challenge yes i know they thought it would probably be all concept art and very uh realistic stuff but no i want to throw them a curveball and give them some abstract art prompts so the prompt was subspatial analog which doesn't necessarily mean anything it's just supposed to feel like a abstract art prompt but uh the results were quite fun so let's take a look at some of these honorable mentions first once again we have beth gilbert representing some lovely colors going on there good good control over the focal points um this one by i would say some of my favorite abstract things i saw were by Bobo Lip. So I'm actually gonna show two of them because Bobo Lip had this one and this one, which is actually even more so my favorite. And that just looks great. I just love that. It's very appealing to me. Um, just kind of has an interesting um, kind of set of flow and rhythm to it. Um, that I, I just think it's cool to look at. Uh, we have this stuff by Daker. Daker? I don't know how to say that. D-A-K-E-R. Even though it's quick, you can tell. A good amount of not using too much focus in certain areas and then like kind of ramping up the focus in other areas, which is what you like to see. Um, this one was by Lina, Lina, Lina Ray, Lina Ray, Lina Ray, that's probably Lina Ray. And this one by Mary, Terrence M, who did these amazing kind of ink drawings. They look like ink drawings, but probably using, you know, online digital means, but uh, just lovely line art. Um, same thing with Tian Anima. Tian Anima. Oh man, these names though. Uh, but a lovely kind of little collection of nice little automatic drawing esque doodles. And finally, this just one by Toku 2D, which I just thought was very subtle and kind of haunting. But let's look at our cadets. So I loved seeing how our cadets would handle an abstract art challenge. Of course, they were all a little bit hesitant super nervous at first but then i explained to them that this challenge is a great way to kind of have a breather from the more complex stuff and just kind of have a little bit of fun and i think some of them really got into it um so there's a lot of interesting stuff going on in here this one by fdb that's just kind of awesome and appealing it feels like an album cover or something sell it actually a lot of these feel like they could be album covers 
Um, so just cool stuff. I was actually just pleasantly surprised by some of this. Even Anna coming in strong with these just interesting, lovely shapes being twisted together. Um, Storse as well. I enjoyed this one. Um, they were just all fun. Sabby. That's just craziness, and I love it. Um, completely unexpected. And, uh, yeah, I, just, I love this assignment. My favorite of this assignment, I'll have to say, probably Franco. Franco killed it with this one. I don't know what it is. This little raw chicken um, venom heart thing, symbiotic. It's just, I don't, it's super interesting, and it looks good. Uh, so great job, Franco. Even Weow, he had a rough one at first, but we got him to, I think, loosen up more with it. And this one definitely came out better. Um, so I gave the uh, strike this time to Swolf Chan, um, which you can see is up here. It's not that it's bad or anything. So it didn't feel like they fully let themselves go. They were still trying to have a bit too much control over it. Um, that's it. You know, it's very subjective when it comes to abstract art. So, uh, that, that was probably the weirdest one to judge. But anyway, let's move along. Assignment number six. We're back to character design for this one. And it's going to be the Takoyaki wizard. Takoyaki is, of course, those little fried Japanese octopus balls, the, whatever. It's food stuff. Um, so let's see how they handled this one. We have some awesome honorable mentions. I don't know why I made this one so small. I guess I saved it at the wrong size, but that's by Chip. We have this one by Beth. This adorable one by Dicker, once again, D-A-K-E-R. <laughs> um, Delica. And this one was just a collab by a few people in the Discord. Uh, I think it was, uh, I can't remember everyone that was involved. I'm sorry. I don't remember all the participants, but they'll know. This is basically a group Discord effort. Um, and it, they're interesting to say the least. We have this lovely one by Div. This is uh, just beautiful. I don't know, this is a great character design. Just all around solid. Uh, this one by Dragon Warrior. And this, once again, I love these adorable ones by Johanna Bell. Uh, Jolly had this awesome one. And this, not, this is just cute once again by Nock. Little Takayaki wizard. Uh, and Terrence M cool effect going on there very fish-eyed and uh that's it so let's check out the cadets uh, so we had a lot of back to characters again where they already showed some strength and promise uh but samuel had this lovely little takayaki wizard i love the broomstick takayaki stick a lot of good stuff uh anna's this is so adorable so much good subtlety going on in a lot of these values and colors as well um, very cute, very happy, and a little cute. Oh, it's, it's, they're just so adorable everywhere. I mean, some people took it a little bit differently, but you know, they all, I, I appreciate the variety. Um, so Overgang, probably my favorite of the Takayaki Wizards, because look at this thing. This feels like a, like a ready to go MOBA character or something. I don't know. It just feels like finished design, awesome artwork, really good stuff. Sappy always has a cute character to share. Um, and yeah, Nikitty, once again, it's a full finished splash screen. Look at this Takayaki, by the way. Just look at it. Look at the texture. Look at the steam coming off them. This looks ready to eat. It's kind of amazing. Um, so a lot of good stuff. Unfortunately, I did give the strike to Blink on this day. Um, which was doo -doo -doo, this one. Not that it was horrible or anything. It's just a little bit, you know, flat and not as dynamic as obviously some of these other crazy entries. Um, so that just hurt a little bit, especially when you're like sandwiched between, you know, all kinds of weirdness and this one under you. It always makes it difficult. But yeah, let's go on to assignment number seven. So assignment number seven was where I started bringing in guest artists to give the prompts for each time, just for like a run, a bunch of them. I tried to get like 10 different guest artists to each give a prompt. This first one is by Ahmed Aldori, a good friend, and uh, it's going to be an environment and his prompt was Rib Cage Island. He even gave a little wordy explanation. I guess I could read it. They call it Ribcage Island. No man worth his own wits would go near it. I mean, why 
would you? Places made of bones, all carved with ancient pictures, old shields of dead sh I can't even say all this. Old shields of dead soldiers hung up and whatnot. They say at the center is a big old glowing eye, pure black, surrounded by a poison blue. Some say it's the eye of Medusa, paralyze you where you stand. Deadly chains every damn where. <laughs> I swear there's some axe-wielding monkeys wearing demon face masks running the whole show. You best turn around before you screaming for your ma, kiddo. I, I cannot do it as well as med, but you get the idea. It was a very hyper-specific prompt, which is good because it's a little bit of variety, forcing them to do something very, very specific. So let's see some honorable mentions. First up, we have this piece by Enix that I absolutely love. I just love the kind of dynamic shapes, just the look of this. Follow the prompt. There's no monkeys, at least I don't see them. But this thing is just lovely. I love this one a lot. Just feels good to me. Um, of course, you can polish it up, finish it more, but even at its current state, this looks great. Um, this one by Aaron Zaya, you know, capture all the weird stuff. Axe-wielding monkeys with masks. Um, so it's just fun to see everyone's take on that. Uh, is this one by Frost? This one by a Jeweler? J-U-L-L-R. Um, nice, very atmospheric. And we have this one by Marie. Also great. This one, super weird, by Sebastian. Um, but really nicely done. Once again, feels like a magic card. And this one by Tatch. So good stuff all around. Let's check out our cadets. Now I feel like by now, this is the seventh assignment, seven days in a row. They're actually really seem to be hitting their stride and just improving all around, which is crazy. It's been like one week of just painting, um, but the stuff they're making is just awesome looking. Uh, so FDB had that. Samuel, I absolutely love this one. This is just beautiful. Um, beautiful artwork being created all around. Uh, so Spider, Sarah, uh, Swolf Chan. Anna's is probably the most, you know, unique because of her style and everything, but I love it. Feels like some weird Tim Burton-esque nightmare. Uh, I don't even know. Um, lots of good stuff. Nikitty san always a pleasure. Weow. Mm -hmm. Went for like a sunken underwater vibe. Um, so I love that variety right there. Uh, True Omen, one of my favorite pieces by True Omen. Just nice, nice looking piece. Good colors, good everything. Um, and they even did some music for it, which I can't play right now. Um, but look at this guy. Even, even Med got in on the fun and made his own entry, um, which I think he became addicted to because you'll be seeing him a lot hanging out giving advice to all the people and also doing entries just for fun each week. No, each week. I feel like it's weeks. It's each day, actually. Oh, there's so much stuff. Um, so that's meds. Uh, this one, Overgang, Stores, uh, Franco, very interesting take as well. Uh, so unfortunately, this was the day where we, w we lost Blink. Blink just didn't make an entry. I think they were kind of worn out. They had two strikes, so they were just bowing out on their own terms. Um, so Blink, we lost Blink, uh, down to 14, and Swolf Chan got the strike on this one. Not that it was bad or anything, just a little bit flat in the composition, you know? Things are kind of not selling the distance um, as well as they could. Let's move on to assignment eight. Assignment 8 is a creature prompt by our good YouTube friend, Marco Bucci. Uh, and the prompt was, Fragile Friend, Brain Enclosed in Glass. So here are some follow-alongs. We have this one by Dragon Warrior. Uh, this one by Eska Spade. I like that, little zerglings. Very cute. Just like the little brains. This is a great one by Frost. I like this little, little snail shell with the brain inside. This one by Miguicom, M-I-G-U-I-C-O-M. I don't know how to pronounce that, but very cute looking. I enjoyed it. Um, and finally, Ted Rex, we got this one. I know I should have saved more because there were definitely more amazing entries for this one. I don't know why I didn't save more, but let's take a look at our cadets. 
So in Cadet Land, we have uh, Samuel doing this. Once again, Samuel just keeps getting better and better. Um, this amazing art, possibly one of my favorites from this assignment. Um, really good stuff. We have another snail with a little brain in a jar. Um, some sad ones. FDB, a little, a little sad there. Uh, this cute one by Sabby. Fortunately, they moved this uh, lightning bolt to the side. It was kind of having a weird placement before they moved it. Uh, Nikitty San, very professional looking. This, this is the type of person you guys need to hire. If you're working for a company, I think, no, they already have a job. <laughs> but still, throw more offers at Nikitty San because they're great. Same thing with Overgang, dude. Um, yeah, I should just make a studio. I don't have anything to produce, but whatever. Anna's probably my favorite from this little assignment. I don't know, it's it's up there right at the top because this is just the cutest thing I've ever seen. It's killing me with cuteness. I can't handle it. Um, lots of cute stuff. Yeah, I was giving Savvy a hard time about their placement. Don't worry about that. We got We Out with the Dinosaurs, all kinds of good stuff. Med bringing in his own take on things. Um, so this one was tricky, but I gave the strike this time to Maganu. Um, so where was that one? Uh, when was this one? I just thought, you know, the owl part of it just felt a little bit standard, you know, like it wasn't as crazy as some of the other ones we had seen. Um, just felt like a attached on part. Um, but, you know, nonetheless, not a bad entry. So let's go. Assignment number nine. Moving along. So for this assignment, we had the wonderful privilege of getting a prompt from old friend and classic YouTuber, Sykra. So thank you, Sykra. The prompt was a Nautilus-themed medical spaceship. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the follow-alongs. We have this one by Corny Lope, and this one by Delica, once again. Dragon Warrior coming in. I, I like this one. This was a nice one by Dragon Warrior. Always doing something strong. Ewerns, Ewerns, I never know how to say their name, but Ewerns, Ewerns, you know who you are. That's a good one. And Marie, a little bit of that Ian McKay flair going on there, but really enjoying those shapes as well. Uh, this one by you know, Ted Rax, a little motorcycle. I enjoyed that, a little space motorcycle. And Toku2D doing some traditional work, so love to see it. All right, let's check out the cadets. So I made sure to show them what a Nautilus is, just in case we don't know. We actually have an international crowd. Uh, it's very international in these cadets, by the way. Uh, we got people in Russia, people in France, people in Canada, um, America, just a little bit of everything. Um, and that's been really fun as well. Uh, I'll, unfortunately for them, they're in wildly different time zones. So that's a little inconvenient, but anyway. Uh, so we had all kinds of good ships going on. I really like this one by Samuel. It's good. It's good Nautilus looking medical spaceship. Uh, Franco had that one. Yeah, a lot of a lot of good stuff. I was trying to really bring in some heat and make it a lot more difficult for them. I'm saving all the harder challenges as we get further and further along. Just kind of begging them to drop out, give up, stop hanging in there. I want this thing to end eventually. Um, but they want them Robux. I'm telling you, I shouldn't have mentioned the word Robux. Um, but Anna, very cute. Um, not like the craziest industrial design. It's just a little squid thing. And then Ahmed had to come in here and just kind of blow them all away. Like, hey, look at me. I went to Art Center. Check out my amazing design ship and everything with his thumbnails. And just, just showing off, really. Um, so those were really cool to see. Um, and yeah, just a lot of, a lot of, a lot of fun stuff in here. Uh, so unfortunately, this time I actually gave the strike to FDB, one of the strongest competitors, but uh, this design just lacked interesting silhouette qualities and wasn't the strongest industrial design. Uh, so definitely a kind of weaker entry by FDB. But that's fine. Let's hop into the last one for this little section, which is assignment number 10. So for assignment number 10, I had my friend Jeremy Aninos give us a prompt. Uh, he's been really blown up and killing it at Riot um, and on Instagram and everything. You can follow him at Aninos Art. Anyway, uh, he gave me the prompt of Ornate Chandelier Warrior. So yes, a chandelier warrior. 
should be fun. Let's take a look. Some really cool stuff in the follow along. We got this one by Alex. This one by Cinco Cabezas. This one, ooh, Dragon Warrior bringing in some really heat on this one. Just loving that one. This feels like it could be planted right into a video game. Um, this one by Enix, very cool. Looks like a, could be, could be a something in Bloodborne, maybe Dark Souls. Uh, this one I liked by Evil Ramen, just because it had a very unique take on the prompt. And this lovely one by Marie. And here's one by Matt. And I, I love this one. This is also just a killer by Sigia. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but S-I-J-I-A. I love this piece. This is a beautiful piece. Um, here's one by S Starship, S Starship, and Yara. This looks like a stand from JoJo's. Um, Yara, Yara, indeed. All right, let's see where our cadets are at. We got all kinds of good stuff. Once again, they're known for their characters, so you know they're going to bring some good stuff. Uh, we have this one by FDB. Look at those little details on the armor. Looking good. Uh, Samuel had this wonderful chandelier weapon thing going on. Um, just a lot of fun. A lot of fun going on here. Um, Anna, always a pleasure to see, of course. Um, uh, Sabby, that's some chunky legs. We appreciate that. Uh, Stores, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, solid stuff. Uh, True Omen with his Chandelier Reaper. Um, Sarah, yeah. Really like this one by Overgang. Uh, he, he changed the name though. It was Chandelier Bing, like Chandler Bing. Uh, but then he changed it to Chandelier Bong for some reason, which isn't as funny. Um, so I'm really sad, but I still have to make a Friends reference. We have this piece um, by Med, who is once again just trying to show off. But he made so many good pieces of art that I gotta feature them. Why isn't it showing up? Let me skip it. It's the, the computer doesn't even want to share it. They're like, look at it. Well, you guys get the idea. It's pretty. Go check out his Instagram. It's great. He's good at art. Um, so this one went to uh, Swoof Chan with the strike. Um, not that it was too bad. Had some good qualities. Uh, just didn't feel as highly polished and dynamic and rendered as some of the other ones. It's, it's getting trickier and it's only gonna get trickier as we go. Um, I'll come back and do the next 10 in a moment, but let's actually, let's do something good. You guys are true gamers. You wanna see some hot unboxing action. So I got this thing uh, from Stater Brothers. It's called a Best Buddies. Oh, can you guys see that? Hold on, let me focus in. This is a professional thing. Look at that. Best Buddies, what is this, Micro Pops? Yeah, they give these away for free, uh, but there's like 20 different ones and you can collect all of them. So obviously what we're hoping for is uh, a Mickey, uh, maybe a Donald, I I'd be okay with a Pluto. Obviously the bad pulls, we don't wanna get a Daisy Duck. Ugh, no one likes Daisy. Um, so let's see what we get. This is, this is the first, this is an uh, unboxing um, surprise. You know, this is how you get all kinds of good, Good. Oh, come on. Okay, it's a little tougher than I expected. Uh, maybe we just pop them. That didn't work. Okay, now that I've taken all the air out, I definitely can't open it. Oh, we got it, don't worry. All right, what are we feeling like? What do we got? It is completely one color. Get out of the bag. <gasps> I think we got a Donald, everyone. Guys, we got a Donald. This is a hot hit. We got a hit here. Wow. Go check that out. That is a, a Donald Duck. Nice little clear blue. This is of course the Chase. I don't know how much this goes for on eBay. Probably at least 500, 600 bucks. Um, it's very nice. Looks like it has a little suction cup there. I guess you just stick it on stuff. Should I st no, I won't stick it on the camera. Um, what can I stick it on? My phone maybe? Yeah. There we go, look at that. We got a little Donald Duck boy on our phone. All right, this is the content you've been waiting for. Uh, so stick around, maybe next time we can go to Stater Brothers, spend money and try to collect them all.
This is clearly the best one though. Look at that. What a pull. What a pull. Jeez, we are making some money today. All right, I'm done with this. I'm out of focus and I'm done. All right. Oof. Well, it's been a short break, but hello again. Um, today we're going to be taking a look at assignments number 11 through 20. Things are heating up. People are starting to get knocked out, drop out, all that good stuff. Uh, so I don't need to waste any time because this is the middle of a video. Uh, but let's just get right into it. So assignment 11 was actually another abstract art challenge, which I personally really enjoy. Um, so the prompt for this one was a dimensional metamorphosis. So obviously the prompts are just supposed to be a little bit weird, a little bit vague, a little bit like high concept nonsense, just verbal garbage, I guess. Um, but yeah, let's take a look first off at what some of the follow alongs did. Like with the previous abstract challenge, we have this beautiful piece by Bobo Lip, which I, once again, I just enjoy immensely. I think it's lovely to look at. This is the type of thing I'd be happy to put on the wall. And we also have this piece by Kay. Um, this really awesome one by Matt that, I don't, it's, it's a little, it feels like it could be polished just a little bit more, but the colors and just the vibes, I, I'm enjoying it. Uh, this one by Mia Tai, which kind of makes me feel a little bit dizzy looking at it. Um, another great drawing by Terrence M. And this, this piece by Yara feels like I would find it in a very expensive museum. Um, so those are all great, but let's, let's take a look at what our cadets did. I forgot to mention that this prompt was brought to you by my cat, Sochi. Look at her. Look at how cute she is. She's the cutest baby in the world. I'll have to get her back on camera before the end of this video. Maybe at the end, like our little special guest. Anyway, uh, so let's dive into them. Uh, really good stuff by FDB, Savvy. Um, just, I, I, once again, these were like always a pleasant surprise anytime I saw the abstract art. Um, so really like what Anna was doing here. This kind of weird flowery effect. Um, and Franco, once again, one of my favorites. It's a little, it's a little bit repetitive of the first one he made, but still just looks great. Uh, Nikitty san definitely stepped up on the second one. I love this very subtle contour lining going on when you look closely. Um, really good stuff there. Uh, Weow, Troman, uh, Ahmed decided to do spoilers for. It's fine. It, it's not real spoilers, maybe. You probably have no context. Just pretend, ignore it. Nothing to see here. Um, but really cool piece of art by Med. Uh, I won't read the text because that would definitely be spoilers. Oh no, I can't skip past it. Okay. Well, we have this lovely piece by Storrs as well, which I really enjoyed. Um, anyway, I actually gave the strike this time to Spider Lair. Um, not that it was too bad or anything. It's just the rest had so much dimension and stuff and it just felt a little bit more simple and not as engaging as some of the other ones. But let's, let's just move on. Assignment number 12. So assignment number 12 was actually another guest artist prompt. And this time it was the incalculable, the wonderful, <laughs> hey, this something or other, Ethan Becker our good friend of the show. But anyway, he gave us a narrative prompt and that prompt is best friends die together. It's a little, little dark, but um, let's see. Let's see what some of the follow alongs did. All right, we got this piece by Delica, which um, that is, you know, just a nice, simple, effective piece. Good, just straightforward values and composition. Had this piece by Dragon Warrior, which is a little, Sad, but there's always a little bit of happiness. And there, there's there's going to be a theme of sadness and trying to be uplifting in sadness. Um, definitely going to be a lot of sad ones, though. Uh, this one by Irons. I am so bad at names, but oh my gosh, it's got the person and their doggo. You can see the collar and the it's it's, it's like the little dog crosses leaning on the. Ah, it's just sad. Okay, that's depressing. Uh, this one by May was just a quick sketch of two people in the stockades. Um, I don't, it, they didn't finish it, but I liked the energy in the sketch, so I just wanted to share it anyway. Um, this one, very, once again, it's, it's, it's heartwarming, but it's also sad by Mia Tai. 
Um, nice, nice to settle lighting. Good, good line work on that. Um, sometimes it's pretty tricky to draw age well, but uh, they did a great job. Uh, this one by Sebastian, also pretty dour. Oh, and uh, something lighthearted. We got this one by Sigia. The little sausages. They're dying together, but you know, it's cute. Look at them. All right, let, let's move into the cadets before we start crying. So there you can see our good buddy, Ethan. Uh, if you're not following his YouTube, it's Ethan Becker. You know, you'll find it easily. Don't worry about it. Um, but we have this amazing piece by Samuel. Really good stuff. Um, you know, it looks like a frame out of an animation. Just super solid all around. I love it. I personally love it. I think that's a great portfolio piece. Good composition. All that good stuff. It's a, more of a sci-fi one by FDB. Uh, once again, bun bunch of sad stuff going on there. Uh, that's just depressing. Um, but good job. This lovely piece by McAnew. You know, everyone really brought out some great pieces for this prompt, I have to say. Um, so this one by McAnew. Lovely colors. Um, had this one by Weow. Sharks. Uh, Anna. Has some zombies going for a joyride. Um, Nikitty is also a little depressing, you know, best friends diet together. Man, um, there we go, spider leg. It's still depressing because there's a, obviously a person and their dog got hit by a car. Um, but at least they look happy, right? Happy ghosts. It could be, could be a lot more depressing, um, but they're happy in their afterlife, so. That's good. Here's the most heartwarming, wholesome one of all by Sabi. Because look, they just best friends died in a video game. It's just adorable. Takes you back to all those childhood memories. Um, so, so thank you, Sabi, for giving us something uplifting. Uh, this one by Franco. This one by Stores. I'm my own best friend. Also, just super dark. You guys are way too edgy for me. Uh, it was a good, just adventure -y one by Overgang, so that one worked out pretty well. Although I don't necessarily feel like they have to die right. There's still a chance. Um, but yeah, and then Jerome and another similar, similar group thing, but another old lady with her cat. Um, yeah. Anyway, I gave the strike this time to this one by Franco. We can't really see a connection of best friends. We can imply it because we know the title. Uh, but if we didn't know the title, we might not assume this is best friends dying together. Could just be, um, you know, any variety of things. It's also compositionally, it's just a little bit flat. We basically have this box out shape right in the middle. Um, and uh, yeah, there's not too much depth going on. So a, a more interesting camera angle. We need to see some more emotion to maybe sell the best friends aspects. Maybe pull in a tight camera angle or something. Uh, let's take a look at number 13. Number 13 is also brought to you by another good friend of the show, YouTube family, uh, Modern Day James. He gave us the prompt. It's an environment prompt and it is the Cinnabon Plateaus. Yes, Cinnabon Plateaus. Um, so let's take a look at the follow alongs. All right, let's just zoom in on this one. We got this lovely piece by Enix, who is once again becoming one of my favorites in the follow alongs. Uh, but I love this one just because it's not hyper literal. It feels like an actual real environment, obviously a little fantastical in its nature. Um, but you know, the colors and everything, it feels like it's a real place that could have been nicknamed the Cinnabon Plateaus. And I just kind of enjoy it. It's very nice. Um, we have a lot more literal ones. There's this one by Frost. Looks delicious. I love the cinnamon sticks. Uh, this one by Mary, which is traditional. Very impressive. I, you gotta love the traditional stuff. That's a strong commitment there. Uh, this one by Sebastian. I'd say it feels more like a like a pita wrap or something. Like a like a euro. I don't know. It's I guess it's just the green. All the green looks like little lettuce in between some wrappings. Uh, but nonetheless, I love this image on its own. Just like the visuals going on. Uh, great image, great piece of art. Um, and then we have, this looks like a horseshoe bend and uh, yeah, turned into a giant Cinnabon. 
Uh, so those are fun, but let's see our cadets now. Here we go. Make sure to follow Modern Day James if you aren't already. Great YouTube content. Really, really great stuff, honestly. He's becoming a master at education. Um, so we got this one by Overgang. Nice use of warms and cools in the shadows. Uh, I loved it anytime I see a good contrast of warm and cool tones. Uh, this one by Samuel has that kind of a uh, Eitan Gillian. I don't know how to say names. Ate. Wait. Oh, man. Whatever. Go buy that guy's book. Anyway, uh, great one by Samuel. Um, let me just start speeding these up. I love this giant fork in the background of Sarah's. Also, I just noticed these, these Cinnabons down here have little eyes like they're hiding or something. I didn't notice that before, but that's kind of adorable. Um, great use of color here by McAneil. Really just just love that pop of just warmth right in there. Um, just really clean focal point. Feels good. Anna went with this kind of like uh, <laughs> stirring, blender, whatever you want to say approach. Uh, the Cinnabons are actually going on a little pilgrimage through the desert off to their holy land. I don't know. Maybe they're just hiking. Who knows what's going on, but it's adorable. Um, Nikitty actually brought forth the animation on this one. Never ready to be outdone. Um, let's see, can I make that bigger? Oops, I just made everything giant. It's way too big now. I'm sorry, I ruined it. But anyway, you can see a wonderful animation by Nikitty. Um, so yeah, everyone's just impressing me so much. Uh, this one by Spider. Uh, maybe a little too much in the purples. I don't know. It, it feels like hyper saturated almost. Um, this one by Franco. Pretty good. This one by Savvy. Very interesting. I don't think we need to talk about that. Um, and Sri Woman. Also pretty interesting. We all had this little gingerbread looking house. I guess technically those aren't really plateaus. I never really thought of it until right now. Kind of snuck one by on me. Anyway, I gave the strike this time to Sabi. Um, compositionally, it just wasn't quite as interesting as a lot of the other ones, and design-wise also. It's a little bit just uh, singular in its approach. Um, so there's that. I don't think anyone got knocked out this time. No, we're, just, we're still good. Uh, so let's move on to assignment 14. Now assignment 14 is brought to you by Anthony Jones, an amazing artist, great value control, just a great person all around. It's kind of the charismatic, enjoyable kind of person that we all wish we could be. Um, but uh, yeah, he gave us the prompt of a creature and it's Sinus, the last surviving dinosaur. Sinus kind of sounds like Cynics, but I'm sure it's just coincidental. Anyway, let's take a look at some of the follow-along. So here is a piece by Alex. It looks like they've mounted and kind of maintained our last living dinosaur. It's a kind of a beast of burden almost, but it looks like he's living an okay life. Um, we have this one, which is just lovely by Dragon Warrior. I love this feathered velociraptor kind of warrior right i don't know this this image is great really good stuff um probably a more believable take on the last dinosaur um and then we got this guy just wandering out in the desert kind of sad he's got like all the bones of his ancestors just hanging out there it looks like a birds are making a nest on his back um but just, just good good personality in that one uh this one's by k um just Kind of looks like he's melting a little bit, um, but I like that. I like the sketches on that right side. And this one is super interesting. This is by Matt and Sebastian. It was a little collab in the Discord voice chat, I think. Um, and they did a great job of balancing out, you know, little little peaks of highlights and having this giant dinosaur that has a whole looks like village built on top of it. Um, very, very unique concept. And this one by Terrence M, which is like a Loch Ness remake. I don't know what you want to call it. It says Nessie's grandpa. All right, but anyway, let's just go look at the cadets. So here we go. Uh, you might obviously recognize Anthony Jones better as Robot Pencil on Instagram. He also has a solid YouTube channel with a lot of good content. 
uh, called Robot Pencil Design. Uh, but let's take a look. Uh, FDB has this old, looks like a grumpy old dinosaur, just chilling out there. The ultimate boomer. Um, lots of fun stuff going on there. Once again, Samuels kind of has some really nice animation vibe. It kind of has that, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. And then there's this, which is mildly offensive. I guess that's supposed to be me. Does this, is that what I look like? He's just being mean to me. I'm just being bullied, but it's a lovely little dinosaur and I have a lovely egg, which looks very precious and I'm happy to protect my little egg. Um, so thank you. I love it. Hmm. All right. Um, anyway, we have this cute piece by Anna. Uh, just adorable. Love the little, little dinosaur going for a walk. Um, it's, it's underground dinosaur fights. We have this piece by Sabi. Um, a little confusing for me. It's got some kind of spiral going into the sun. It's like a black hole. Forest boy here. Uh, Nikitty, always a pleasure to see these. Um, really good stuff. Uh, this one by Weow. Uh, it's a little, little police dinosaur. <laughs> It's fine, yeah. Look at that little guy. Good, good use of subsurface scattering. Um, really, really just enjoyable presentation. Uh, this adorable <laughs> one by Storcy is stealing a little chicken. I love these. I love the way these chickens are drawn. They just look like adorable. Anyway, uh, Spider Lair, Sarah, True Omen. Um, so this one, the strike went to True Omen. Um, they just kind of rushed it because at this point I think they were done with it. They had school stuff to do or something. I don't remember, but they're too busy. Um, so they're, they're, they're done. They're done. They don't want to play anymore. Um, which is fine for me because that means this thing will eventually end. Eventually. Let's move on to assignment 15. Assignment number 15 is brought to you by guest artist Anton Fadiv. Um, just a, a new person I met through this contest. They got really exciting art, a lot of good environments. Uh, it was really fun to just discover their work. But anyway, the prompt is a vehicle prompt, a post-apocalyptic ground vehicle for a battle mage. Um, so that should be a lot of fun. Let's take a look at some of the follow-alongs. All right, so we got a lot of familiar names here. It's a nice motorcycle design by Alex. Uh, another motorcycle design by Black Sleeves 18. Um, surprising amount of motorcycles, now that I think of it. Uh, here's a piece by Dragon Warrior, once again, over the top. I like this, I don't know, Hellhound. <laughs> Very cool looking, though. I like that one a lot. Uh, some cool sketches that I wanted to share by Marie. And this little dirt bike by Patchy Pillow that has a little unicorn skull. It, it, that's enough to sell the whole fantasy, dark mage, whatever vibe, right? Yeah. All right, let's see how the cadets did. So, as you can see, you can find Anton Fadiv on ArtStation under the name Shant, S-H-A-N-T. Check it out if you haven't. Um, and let's see, they had Samuel starting things off strong with this really good-looking stuff. I like the effects going on. Good presentation. It's very solid-looking. I was once again, I thought when I gave them vehicles that everyone would just be completely thrown for a loop and, you know, struggle infinitely. Uh, but a lot of these are surprisingly really cool. Um, so there's that one by Franco. This one by FDB, super awesome. Um, anyway, gotta love it. Overgang with the crazy Mad Max warlord motorcycle mage guy. Um... And even a med got in on the fun. What is this, man? What? Why? I mean, I guess it looks like a wizard or a battle mage in post-apocalypse land. But yeah, that's that's a lot to unpack. Um, uh, here we have a nice Subaru <laughs> with a laser. Um, yeah, all kinds of good stuff going on here. Kitty. Um, yeah, etc. 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 Like this one by Weo. Very much vibing with some Alex Constad vibes on that one. 
Um, and Truman, really strong on this one. Really like this motorcycle. Very like clean in its design and very effective. Um, so actually, the strike this time went to McInew, which was boop, 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 the Subaru. I'm sorry, it's not a Subaru, is it? Yeah, it, it totally is. Subaru Cross Track. Um, it just wasn't as exciting as some of the other ones. So maybe it's more realistic as your post-apocalypse mage vehicle, but I like some of the designs in the other ones. Anyway, let's move on. Assignment number 16. So assignment number 16 is brought to you by my good friend, Jet of the Jetty Jet Show. Um, you probably, if you've been around a long time, you remember him from Psyker Streams as well as some stuff on my channel. Uh, but he gave us the character prompt of Elvin Valkyrie from the ancient Crystal Flower Kingdom. Um, so, it's a little bit of a fun character stuff, so let's see how the follow-alongs did. This one is by Audrith. Um, that's just an interesting kind of design elements going on in there. Uh, this one by Kay. Uh, they have also interesting, solid design elements. Uh, this one by Marie is also really good. A lot of good sketches, nice presentation, very unique character traits going on in that one. Uh, this one by Matt. I love the use of the crystal. Well, actually, mainly leans into the flower part. Uh, but we have these nice, strong flower elements that I really like. Uh, here's one by Quack, which leans more into the crystal aspect. And Touch, which has a little bit of insect. I think, is that like an Intomalus sword? Anyway, another good piece there. Let's go into the cadets, though. So, of course, you might be following Jet's YouTube. That's the Jetty Jet Show. He also has a great Instagram. And if you're ever at a convention, that's a good time to say hi to him as well. So we got FTB here. Really solid, actually. Um, I love the colors on this one. That is really nice by... Oh, great. They're changing their names. This is recorded a little bit after afterwards, so there's a lot of name changes and technically spoilers happening in the names but i'm trying to ignore them um but anyway we got we got this one by samuel this one by sarah um this beautiful one in my opinion by overgang i'm starting to really be able to identify their styles and traits as well um, so that's a great one obviously anna's is always the easiest to identify um got that one by sabi Spider Lair, Mechanu, Nikitty, Weow, etc. True Omen. Uh, Stores Franco. I like this one by Franco a lot. Um, they kind of went with this Nerjan Bekliev influence, um, but really, really good control over that. This one was True Omen's last one. They just did a quick short sketch just to get themselves a strike and save the other people. Uh, but this was the assignment that True Omen went out on. So. Good night, sweet prince. We will miss you, true omen. Let's move along to assignment 17. So assignment 17 also happens to be an abstract art prompt. I know, it feels like we just had one. Uh, the prompt for this one is spectral hegemony. Hegem hegem I can't even talk properly. Spectral hegemony. Yeah, that's a good name, right? I don't know. Let's see what some of the follow-alongs did. We have this uh, lovely crab work piece by clockwork fish i don't know why i said crab work um but yeah it's interesting uh here's a cool one by frost has some interesting depth going on in there um and just some some weird stuff by mcguicom and once again i always look forward to terence m's sketches every time there's an abstract prompt they do really interesting uh, just line work sketches. I think I think my cadets are getting a little tired of the abstract, but let's see what they came up with. So no guests on this one, just a straight up normal abstract prompt. Um, Sabi definitely hyper rushed that one, but that's fine. Uh, Liao also a bit of a rush, uh, but FDB really did something fun and unique for this one. I like this one. Um, really cool use of just these hyper-saturated, almost um, awkwardly strong colors, but it works because it's more abstract and helps sell the vibes going on in there. So that one's really cool. I like that one. Uh, Sarah has a nice one. Stores, very cool. Samuels, a bit on the lazy side. <laughs> we'll get back to that. Um, 
So yeah, I like this one by Nikitty again. I think I prefer the previous one a little bit more, but this one kind of feels more like a, a piece you would hang on your wall. Um, Spider Layer really came through with some interesting stuff on this one. Um, after getting the strike in the previous abstract art, um, kind of came back with some interesting stuff. Anyway, the strike this time actually went to Samuel. As you can see, it looks like it was made in about five seconds, just using a, a brush and some strokes going in the same direction. Uh, this doesn't quite have the same depth as the rest. Point, But I think maybe we're done with abstract art for this whole challenge. Um, so let's move on to assignment 18. Assignment 18, it's actually going to be an architectural environment prompt, and that prompt is Water Cathedral. Um, so let's take a look at what some of the follow-alongs did. So we have this one by Frost. It's got like some water, some fish or sharks or something swimming around in the bottom of the cathedral. Uh, this one by Sebastian with this very sunken Gothic architecture. Uh, here's one by Strivek. Yeah, I think I said that right, Strivek. Um, and it's just kind of a flooded, marshy looking cathedral area. And finally, this one by Tatch. Also, this flooded cathedral. I like the open sky. And, um, I think they handled the, the colors in this water really well. I like these turquoises and everything. Uh, but let's see how the cadets did. Um, I think they did a pretty good job with this one. I really like starting off strong, FDB. Um, probably based on a bunch of reference stuff, but it just looks great. Just a nice sunken uh, cathedral in the water. Uh, I like the little orange glow there. That really helps the thing pop just a bit. Um, so a lot of different ones. Uh, this one by Samuel, I really like. It looks a little confusing. Like there's a secondary kind of almost translucent layer of different shapes on top of these shapes, which gets a little confusing. But when you actually look more closely at it, uh, I do actually like it a lot. Um, so nice piece by Samuel. Um, another great piece by Anna. Uh, this little little whale cathedral over here. Just, just so good. Why is Anna so good at everything? Uh, McKenna or McKinney, definitely one of their stronger kind of interesting environment pieces. Really like that. This is kind of how I would have probably um, envisioned it with the water falling into the cathedral, um, maybe with like a statue. Um, but I think we have some other ones with statues. Anyway, this one by Sarah. Nice. Yeah, also very nice. And Spider. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we out actually did the thing with the statue in the middle. Really great control over colors as well. Maybe could have had a little bit more water stuff going on. Um, but I like that. Overgang with the water DLC. Uh, here's the kitties. Once again, probably what I was kind of envisioning in my head. And that looks absolutely lovely. Um, so really good piece there. Maybe my favorite of all the water cathedrals. Um, then there was Franco's. A little, little bit on the flat side. And Sabi's. So unfortunately, I did give the strike to Franco on this one. It just kind of felt a little bit flat. Weird choice on this translucent text box as well, um, but just that didn't quite have the same depth and interest as some of the other ones. Um, so yeah, not, not my favorite by Franco. Uh, anyway, let's go on. Number 19. So at this point, it's been going for a while. I started to try to get more creative with the categories for the prompts. So this prompt is actually a food illustration prompt, and it's going to be General Ping's Roasted Catfish Upon Green Onion Waffles with Special Sauce. So I was trying to make up a weird kind of almost whimsical uh, item that you might see on a menu in a restaurant. And let's see how everyone approached that. So starting with the follow-alongs. Got this one by Escaspade. I like that. Very clean presentation there. Uh, here's one by Frost. Went extra green with the onion waffles. And uh, this one by Kizaru. Uh, this, that roasted catfish looks okay. I'd probably eat that. Give it a try. Here is one by Mia Tai. Um, actual green onions just chilling on the plate. I don't know if you're supposed to eat those as a garnish. 
Um, but it looks pretty appetizing otherwise. Here is a giant, giant catfish by Sam. I guess just dig into it, you know, hope for the best. And here's a very realistic looking food piece by Travis Arts. So a lot of fun stuff in the follow alongs, but let's see how our cadets did. All right, so starting off strong, we actually have an animation by FDB. Um, I posted some food animations to get them excited. Um, and it looks like FDB wanted to actually try an animation. So good job, FDB. Gotta, gotta commend people for going the extra mile on these challenges. Uh, really good stuff. Overgang, uh, pretty good. I don't know what's going on with the price of this thing. Uh, we got this one by Samuel Franco. Ooh, that, that actually looks very tasty. Nice hand-painted table as well. A little bit of focal depth. Um, yeah, I, I think I'd go for this. I think I'd eat that. I, I wouldn't mind ordering that. Another one by Sarah. Um... We Ow took a great concept and made their own restaurant. This is like We Ow Donald's. I don't know. We Ow's. We Ow's fast food restaurant. Look at this thing. We got this roasted catfish on like a waffle bun sandwich. Special sauce on top. I, I'm actually down for it. I think it probably would taste great. I know you guys think it sounds super weird. Green onion waffles. But I think they'd be amazing. Uh, especially with some catfish on top. Um, we got Sabi with a little bit of a to-go wrap thing. And, uh, ooh, it looks like Nikitty also has a quick little animation. And it's just the nice effects of the pouring sauce on top of this wonderfully painted design. Um, so wonderful plating, wonderful presentation with a little bit of animation. Uh, this is some gourmet Michelin star stuff going on here. And Spider, Spider Lair, not to be outdone, decided to go with all, an all-out knitted, embroidered, I don't even know what you call this, a little, a little felt creation. This is actual, actual felt creation. This is not a painting. This is a real thing. They actually made a thing for this challenge. So good job, Spider. Um... Now, sadly, on this day, you might be like, hey, where's, where's Anna? Where's Storrs? Well, they actually had to drop out. So we lost Anna on this day. We lost Storrs on this day. And Samuel, I gave him the strike. Not because it was bad looking, but because it didn't quite follow the prompt. There's no, there's no green onion waffles. Um, and it even says it's a salmon. I think they actually told me they didn't actually notice that there was a specific prompt. They just thought it was a draw a food prompt. So just a little bit of miscommunication there. Um, they actually did a great piece though. Um, but anyway, yeah, we lost a couple people. I think this brought it down to, oh, what did it bring it down to? 10 people? So let's take a look at one more today. This is going to be assignment number 20. For assignment number 20, I decided to go back to creatures and the prompt is, Timothy the Dragon Snail. So we're hoping to see some fun, interesting dragon snail creatures. Uh, so let's take a look at the follow-alongs, as always, to get it started. And this is probably one of my favorite follow-alongs in the whole thing. Look at this thing. This is a wonderful rendition of a dragon snail by Enix. Uh, really like this one. Just nice focal depth, nice control over values and colors. Feels like a dragon snail, and I love it. Um, also, this one by Escaspade also feels like an interesting Pokemon take on a dragon snail. Uh, and we got, a, we got our little dragon snail smog, smog, the desolation of Timothy here, hoarding all of his gold. Uh, this is by Frost. Really good stuff. Uh, Kay gave us some quick sketches. Always love Kay's sketches, especially when it comes to creature stuff. Uh, a nudibranch. Nudibranch? I don't know how to say that. Nudibranch rakes. Anyway, we're, we're fine. Very uh, awesome sketches and designs here by Mary or Marie. I always say Mary. Or, I don't ever know if it's Mary or Marie. No, I think it's Marie, right? Okay, whatever. I, I'm terrible at names. And this one by Mia Tai. It's a grumpy little dragon snail here blowing fire. All right, on to the cadets. There's not that many left. We're like halfway through. 
So up first we had uh, Samuel, which I like this. I like this double snail shell wing thing that they went for. It's a really good, good idea, good technique. Uh, FDB, also really strong looking. Love this part in here. Uh, that feels like a dragon snail. Uh, Sabby went with also the shell wings, um, but a little more of a cute, kind of adorable, cartoonish approach. And Spider, even Spider had this great one with the two shells and the cute little face and everything. I like that as well. Um, Makeno went for the extra long dragon. And I love, I love these little wings on Weeels, these little slime wings coming out of the snail shell. So a lot of great stuff going on here. Look at the kitties, subsurface scattering, beautiful lighting, gotta love that. Um, and Overgang, also great design. Just, just great takes all around. Franco's even. Franco's might even be my favorite. There's so many good ones. I absolutely loved what came out of the dragon snail prompt. Just so much good stuff. Um, unfortunately, I had to give the strike to uh, Sarah this time. And it wasn't that bad or anything, but there was just so much awesome entries going around that this one felt a little bit less um, polished and designed than some of the other ones. Yeah, anyway, that's going to do it for our look at assignments 11 through 20. I don't have any fun thing to open for you guys today. Uh, so no bonus content. You guys, you guys, you probably want this video to end, so I'll stop talking and I'll check back in after we get to number 30. All right, well, hello again, everyone. I think we're just gonna power through the rest of the tournament. Um, obviously, there's going to be less contenders each round as we get closer and closer to the end. Uh, so we'll just be snapping through these pretty fast. So let's go ahead, settle in, get comfortable. No more different days. We're going to handle it right now. So assignment number 21 was a bipedal mecha uh, that's supposed to look like it was made out of airplane parts. So I know it's gonna be pretty challenging for a lot of them. I thought this would be the real like test of their ability to do a variety of things because a lot of people don't like mechs. But let's see what the follow-alongs did first. So we had this one by 3D Berserk, this one by Black Sleeves. Definitely like these wheel landing gear legs that a lot of people are going with. Uh, my favorite was probably this one by Enix, once again. Evil Ramen with the little very casual looking space shuttle. Uh, Miguelicom, also looking good, and Terrence M. So let's see how, how our precious cadets handled this tough challenge. So quick reminder, there are only 10 of them left. So we got FDB, looking good, solid, always reliable. Uh, Samuel, yeah, it's, uh, surprisingly Nikitty, once again, kind of killing it when I completely expected uh, Nikki to have a lot of trouble, but no, just another awesome illustration. Even when it's mechs, can't seem to trip them up. Um, there's some weaker ones. Overgangs was a little bit rough. Uh, Design-wise, you know, Sabi's not, not my favorite, but it does have a little gun attached, so at least it's charming in some way. Uh, Franco did a great job. Um, but yeah, actually, you know, at the end of it, I gave the strike to spider layer on this one. Um, so that was their entry. Just a little bit of perspective stuff, you know. I know it's really tripping people up trying to do this heavy perspective, especially when they don't normally do perspective. Um, this was also the day, actually, I said there were 10, but there were starting with 11. We actually lost Sarah. It's, uh, it's been three weeks at this point, and a lot of people are just like, I have life stuff, I have other stuff, I cannot keep doing these daily paintings. Um, surprisingly, so many people are sticking with it. Now let's hop into assignment number 22. Okay. Ooh. Okay, let me just preface this assignment by saying that I invited a lot of people to do guest prompts. I invited a lot of different artists I know, uh, different YouTube people. One of the people I invited was Ditus, who runs a nice little story time YouTube channel. A uh, very fun person. Um, the, um, the prompt he decided to go with is an 
Opai anime waifu wearing a Sugoi Dekai shirt. Yes. Yes, that is the prompt. I had no say in it. I let him do whatever he wants. That's what he wanted. Let's see how it came out. So we had a lot of, let's say, interesting entries. Obviously, not everyone wanted to do a waifu, so we got some husbandos in here. Uh, this one by Al Deseri. And, uh, you know, Enix took a different route, which um, I guess that could be a waifu. I'm not sure exactly what kind of, you know, I don't want to judge anyone's tastes or anything like that. It technically follows the prompt, uh, so I think we're okay with it. Frost, yeah, those are just uh, a couple giant boobies in a t-shirt. Um, definitely got the core idea there. Uh, luckily, Paulina went for something, I think, more uh, traditional. That's probably what Dice was looking for. Um, and we have this one by Quack, which uh, I believe is just a self-portrait. But you can be your own waifu. That's, that's fine. <laughs> let's, let's see how our cadets handled this little curveball. So in case you're wondering, this is the shirt in question. <laughs> Um, this is Ditus and his wonderful YouTube channel. Check it out if you haven't. It relates to artists and everything. It's a, it's a good channel. Uh, so let's see. We had uh, Samuel went pretty uh, simple, obvious. Yeah, it's just a nice, wholesome, a wholesome waifu. Maybe not maximum. Nikitty, not having any of it. I'm rebelling against the prompt. I, I don't blame Nikki at all. Um, I, I, yeah, we can click this. Can we? Is this safe? No, nah, yeah, sure, it's safe. It's, um, I don't know. I guess even Baxter Stockman needs a uh, Opai waifu. Um, so that was certainly one of the most impressive uh, renderings and pieces. So great job, FDB. Um, we had all kinds of various other entries. Um, Overgang just going full on anime with this one. So I respect that. Even Sabi. Just going, going for it. So more so than the follow-alongs, the cadets um, were just kind of running. For, what? Ahmed? Of course he wouldn't skip this one. Of course Ahmed had to do one as well because obviously why wouldn't he do this prompt? Um, so there's that. That's certainly a thing. Um, and we all had a nice little zombie girl. So everyone has, you can see their own little personalities coming through in all of them. So I actually asked Ditus to deliver the strike for this one. And it was tricky, but he picked, well, technically he almost picked Samuel. He was like, this isn't Opie enough. Um, but he actually gave the strike to Overgang. Uh, the anime parts are maybe a little wonky. It doesn't quite fit his style as well as it could. And then, and then those knees are a little weird. Let's be honest. It's probably the knees. Um, so, that's it. Luckily, no one got knocked out. You all survived uh, this very exciting prompt. All right, let's move on. Number 23. And I'll be honest, at this point, I was just trying to ring out the cadets into as many weird things as I could. Um, so I gave them a graffiti style challenge. All they had to do was write their name, nickname, whatever, in a cool graffiti style art piece. Um, so before we jump into those, let's see the follow alongs. We had this one by Al Deseri, this one by Black Sleeves, uh, this one by Frost, which is looking pretty crisp, like a nice Jet Set Radio little throwback. And this one I really like by Terrence M. It's got a nice personality to it. A little bit of Asian flair. This one by Zelenia. Um, so all good stuff, really. So. Hopefully our cadets manage to handle this curveball prompt as well. It's almost starting to get disgusting, but Nikitty, once again, did a great job with graffiti style art. Like, I can't find any faults. Everyone go hire <laughs> Nikitty um, for apparently anything, because they can just handle whatever. Um, so that one's really nice. I like the simple brick background. Uh, that became a theme. A lot of people just put their graffiti on a some kind of concrete or brick background, and that really helped a lot. Um, so this this wonderful Sonic thing by uh, Samuel McKenna did a pretty good job there. Sabi Overgang with the nice little donity approach. Donity. Um, Franco went for a very line style heavy kind of 
approach, but it has nice flow, nice energy going on there. Spider going for their spider graphic. It actually says spider layer in there. It doesn't just say spider. Um, so that's good. Well, yeah, with the, the dino skull. So this one was also a tricky strike, but I think I had to give it for FDB. His was just a little too simple compared to the rest. It didn't quite have the same ambition. And that's too bad because FDB, definitely one of the strongest uh, illustrators and renderers, but some of these just simple graphic design and uh, simple industrial design ones are kind of tripping him up a little bit. But don't worry, still in it. So let's move on to number 24. A little break from the chaos, I decided to give them an environment for number 24, and it was a cyberpunk castle. So a little bit of conceptual contrast coming at them. Uh, let's see how the follow-alongs did. We have this one by 3D Berserk, kind of gives off that Blade Runner vibe. Uh, Esca Spade, very simplistic. I like that style though. Nice kind of blocky, chunky colors and everything. Uh, Frost, another, there's a lot of blue and pink just be forewarned. All that cyberpunk stuff. That's, that's a fun one. I like this one because it felt a little bit different. You can actually see the castle structures um, a little bit more literally. And uh, this was by Marie, and I think that was probably my favorite follow along for this assignment. Uh, we also had this nice one by Sam, uh, Strivek, also great, and Terrence M, another solid piece. All right, back to the cadets. So for the cadets, uh, looks like we had a bunch of interesting ones. FDB, once again, very, very solid. Uh, Spider definitely came out strong with this weird Illuminati Tower, but uh, I liked it. It was an interesting piece. McKenna, it's a little, little chaotic, but cyberpunk is allowed to be a little chaotic, so I think that's fine. Franco going for a pretty basic palette there. Um, Nikki, you know, can't fault that. Um, but that's all good. Yeah, they all look pretty good. Sabi, also great. Um, and Leo, so... Uh, yeah, uh, the the strike this time actually had to go to Samuel. Didn't have to, but I felt like when I looked at all of them, it just felt a little kind of confusing and not as clear cut as some of the other ones. Uh, unfortunately, that was Samuel's last strike. So this is where we lost Samuel. Um, so I think at this time we are down to just, what, eight? But let's go on. Simon number 25. So, of course, for number 25, we have to honor Pokemon number 25, Pikachu. Um, so, I decided to give them a prompt of redesigning Pikachu as either a grass-type or a rock-type Pokemon. So, they can either go rock or grass, whichever they feel like. They got a little bit of an option on this one. Uh, let's see how the follow-alongs did. I already knew I was going to love a lot of the entries for this particular assignment. Uh, so this one by Al Seri is adorable. That is a great interpretation of a leaf Pikachu. Uh, we have this kind of rock one that actually still mixes in a little bit of leaf by Alex. I like that. Uh, this one by Escaspade also looks very authentic. And um, what is this? Kekromancy decided to go with one that's a little more pollen influenced. Um, and I think that's also a fun way to interpret it. Definitely didn't see any other ones like that. And lastly, we have this one by Sebastian. Just a pure, leafy little Pikachu. All right, I'm looking forward to the cadets on this one. With so few left, we can probably just take a better look at all of them. So FDB had this lovely render and just adorable little rock boy. He looks so cute. He looks like he got caught, like, you know, stealing cookies or something. Uh, another rock one by Weow. A nice little, look like cracked ruby cheeks. A little bit of red in there. I like that. Um, Overgang. Also looking pretty nice. Very kind of dirty, kind of soily. So at this point, I'm wondering, you know, where are all the leaves? But luckily, we got McKenna coming in with some leaf stuff. Looking fun and happy. Spider. Also very cute and fun. I'm digging that. I like that little extra kind of touch. A little bit of originality there. And Sabi is just adorable on this one. Another one of my 
favorite little designs. So I, once again, I just love it. Franco, oh, this tail is just beautiful. Beautifully done tail. Um, so I love this challenge so much. Uh, Nikki, I, I would say it's a little on the safe side, but the colors, the subsurface scattering, all that stuff is amazing. Design-wise, it's not quite as strong. Um, but nonetheless, I decided to actually give the strike this time to McKenna. Um, when you combine in the rendering and the design, it just felt a little less interesting than some of the other ones. Um, but yeah, certainly a good run. And this happened to be, once again, we're losing people left and right. This happened to be McKenna's last strike. So uh, they got knocked out now. Now we're just down to seven. It's, it's just coming fast and furious. Let's, let's move in. Assignment number 26. So I've given them so many different styles of assignments and prompts, but the one thing I haven't done is the clothing design, specifically graded on just the clothing, not the character. So for number 26, the prompt is strawberry jacket, whatever that may mean. Um, yeah, just good luck with it. Make some kind of jacket that looks strawberry inspired. Uh, let's jump into the follow alongs. Aldisseri looking pretty comfy. Uh, this one by Eska Spade also looking really nice, very fashionable. I like the little extra flourish on the collar. A lot of good little kind of textural details. This one's by Heya Heya. Um, here's one by Matt. Also just a nice looking character, good character design overall. Um, the jacket works pretty well in the character. This one by S -Star S Starship, maybe just Starship, uh, but I like that. That's kind of a distillation of a very functional and realistic take on a strawberry jacket. Um, and we have this one by Terrence M. Let's see how those remaining cadets are doing. All right, so it looks like FDB decided to go back to his original characters and actually give them a little strawberry jacket on each of them. Uh, so if you don't know, these were the three characters that FDB made as his Chroma Cadet entry. So way back at the start, it feels like ancient history by now, but man, it's, it's only a handful of weeks, really. Uh, this one by Wio is looking pretty okay. A little, little, little rushed. Overgang, I really like this one. Nice big shapes. Um, love that puffy, almost pleathery looking vibe. It just... This feels like it'd be super comfy. Um, Nikki, I'd say it's a little bit simple compared to some of the other designs. Uh, Spider went full on just Project Runway, New York Fashion Week, just going wild, super couture. All right, um, Savvy decided to kind of go in a slightly more different approach. I don't know, I like it though. It feels super aesthetic. Um, so good job, Sabby. And Franco, once again, very common to have these big, like, strawberry-esque um, kind of shapes inside the jacket. That was definitely the most common aesthetic. I actually gave the strike this time to Nikitty. And Nikitty's been obviously one of the best, but I felt like the design, um, compared to some of the others, it was just a little bit on the simple side. Um, just want to see a little bit more craziness going on in there. But let's move on to assignment number 27. Now, maybe I was just feeling hungry, but I actually really liked the food prompt we did previously. So I thought I'd do one more food prompt. And this time I decided to make it a pumpkin spice cheesecake, which I didn't know was actually a real thing. I just thought I was being like silly, like, oh, pumpkin spice cheesecake. Apparently it's just a real thing. Um, but nonetheless, let's see how the follow-alongs handled that. This is a very ominous looking <laughs> pumpkin spice cheesecake by Clockwork Fish. Uh, just, just a nice, delightful one by Escaspade and Frost. And Mia Tai, I like this. This rendering is just very pleasant, very comforting. And even Sebastian, this felt a little more themed, so I enjoyed that aspect of it. Kind of feels like a, like a carrot cake but a pumpkin version of a carrot cake. I guess that would just be a pumpkin cake. Oh well, let's, let's take a look at our cadets. All right, so every challenge is becoming more and more stressful. Uh, FDB, you know, great job. Just super nice rendering, very clean. Nikki had this almost photorealistic, just beautiful little 
<laughs> little pumpkin spice cheesecake here. There's even an animation with the little bits of uh, like nutmeg being sprinkled around. Um, so that's great. Uh, Franco, I would say, also looks great. It's a little bit looking like you just took a like a sponge from under your sink and you know drizzled some maple syrup on it. But other than that, you know, I'm sure it tastes great. Uh, Overgang. I'm sorry, I'm so loud on my mouse. I'm just like. Phew. Overgang, very nice as well. Uh, we are kind of kind of doing a great job with the whipped cream. I feel like the cake, a little, a little awkward looking. Um, Sabi went for very highly themed uh, kind of design and shape, uh, which I appreciate. I love the little pumpkin cinnamon sticks, all the all the spices. Um, and Spider had some little little Halloween themed stuff. Um, so unfortunately, I gave the strike this time to Weeow, um, mainly just because the actual cake part just didn't look very appetizing. Now, say what you want about this, you know, piece of sponge, but I think I'd rather eat the sponge uh, with maple syrup than this. This one just doesn't look as appetizing to me. Yeah, no one got knocked out. So let's move on. Assignment number 28. Now. This might be one of the weirdest ones yet. And at this point, you know, it's 28 days in. I'm getting delirious. Everyone's just making random stuff. Um, I decided we'd do a little throwback to one of our favorite cadets from long, long ago. And that is uh, True Omen. Now, it, this won't make sense to as so much of the people watching this. Um, but True Omen was just a very kind of... Uh, interesting and fun person to have in the voice chats as we were all working on stuff. So I thought it would be fun to do a prompt in tribute to that. So the prompt is true omen makes a friend. Let's see how the follow alongs did with this one. Yeah, first of all, this is just too adorable by Al Desari. Desari? I never know what I'm saying. Um, so I don't, I don't know if that's how true omen would make a friend. Um, this this feels painfully true. Just that awkward look at the Discord screen, <laughs> trying to add someone as a friend. Um, there's a lot of really delightful inside jokes going on in here. Uh, so this was by Noir, and uh, I loved it. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> um, this is also a little inside humor, because uh, this is True Omen's previous frog cat entry. Um, and this one was by Quack, so made me laugh. I enjoyed it. <laughs> and we have this one by Sigia. Dear God, send me a friend, please. Hi. Yeah, I love it. So if you don't know, True Omen, very Russian, very thick Russian accent. Um, I think that will play a factor in some of the cadets' entries, but let's just take a look. So let's see. We have this one by FDB. Oh, it's animated. It's got the rain effects. That is just nice looking. He found a little robot dog. It's cute. It's a good piece. Very solid. Uh, Overgang decided to give him a giant bear with vodka. It's very Russian. You know, can't argue with that. Um, if people didn't make some weird Russian stereotype, they generally used True Omen's cadet entry character. For the cadet entries, True Omen did this orange-haired, orange jacket guy with a T, whatever. Um, so a lot of people just decided to use that for the stand-in. So that's, that's a nice one by Nikitty. Um, this kind of creepy, strange one. Also some inside jokes going on in there. I think that's his insect blade. He wants to show everyone his sword. It's very nice. Uh, this one by Franco. Also a lot of sword and alcohol and moth jokes. Once again, inside humor. You guys won't get it. You're just not cool. Um, this one by Sure Savvy. Um, also, a lot of people made Jerome and weirdly just buff and giant. He does hate photo bashing. That is, that is a true omen fact. Does not approve of photo bashing. Um, yeah, so, Mop Pit. All right, things are getting a little wild at this point. Um, but yeah, I gave the strike this time to Overgang. Just couldn't handle this awkward posing and the, the composition of everything being weirdly on the bottom. I don't know, he knows. You know what you did, Overgang. You know that's not great. <laughs> 
All right, anyway, let's move on. Assignment number 29. So this one happened to be fresh off my Lightbox weekend talk about gun design. So I thought, hey, let's uh, just do some self-promotion and have them all design a gun. So the gun I wanted them to make was a Space Pirate Blunderbuss. So kind of like a futury blunderbuss. Uh, let's take a look at some of the follow-alongs. So we have a fun little rendering here by Azrael. Um, and also look at this cute little whale thing by Aldisari. I just love it. It's so adorable looking. Um, it's just a fun little gun. Uh, Camillus had this uh, pretty awesome intricate design that I definitely liked. Feels like a futury Old West revolver. Um, Escaspade had this one. I think the handle could be a little bit kind of more tweaked. We have this very cyber looking one by Heya Heya. And uh, this, just some interesting kind of fun ornate designs by Say2 that I kind of enjoyed. The handles are a little bit wide. All right, back to our cadets. So, you know, of course I had them watch my video. Um, and yeah, FDB had a pretty lovely entry. I like this subtle engraving and detailing. Uh, it's pretty fun. Captures the vibe. Uh, same thing goes for Overgang. Really kind of nice, futury looking blunderbuss, I would say. Um, so good job on that one. Good sketches as well. Way out had this Kraken, cr the Krakum theme. Uh, I like the heavy theming. I think that worked out pretty well. Um, Nikki had this Nice little plasmy one, but once again, great little inlay details. You can get away with a lot of, a lot of good extra kind of depths in your designs just by doing some interesting textures and inlays and engravings and patterns and all that good stuff. And yeah, it looks like it's wearing a little tiny sombrero. Just want to throw that out there. Uh, Sabi had uh, this one, a little rough. I would say very rough actually. Uh, Franco had this one, which is just nice, effective, good design. And Spider had this one, which was also feeling a bit rough. This was the day where Spider got their last strike. So we had to say goodbye to Spider on this day. That means there's only six, six left. That's it's getting really close to the end and most of them have two strikes. So. Um, only a handful of challenges left. Well, technically like six or something. But anyway, uh, let's just move along. Assignment number 30. So I had a lot of fun with my little Pokemon prompt. Um, and I thought it would be cool to make people redesign a Mario Brothers character in a classic medieval setting. So, you know, maybe a little bit of fantasy medieval. So maybe we can have Luigi as a wizard. Um, Waluigi as a knight. I don't know. Anything with Waluigi is probably pretty good. Uh, let's see how the follow-alongs handled it. All right. First up, we have Princess Daisy as a princess. Um, no, I like this. Uh, I like the redesign. My only critique would be that I think the the cape should have just been orange to match the original kind of cape or the original color scheme. So that was that's my only vibe. It would have been nice to see that in the strong orange. And I think it would have been pretty great. I like the character though. Uh, we have this little tank. It's like a little mount. It's a little dinosaur mount by Kay. Uh, so that's great, Kay. We have this amazing piece. This is kind of what I had in mind when I originally thought of the prompt. Uh, this is by Matt and they turned this in way later. So I don't think they did this on the first day, uh, but it looks great. I love it. It's fun, it feels good. Um, this is a very romantic piece uh, by by Noir, and uh, this nice little nice little dramatic uh, I don't know what to call it, but a nice dramatic illustration by Sebastian. Very strong on the perspective too. Here we have Rosalina as a knight captain in a very Final Fantasy Tactics esque uh, situation, and that's by Terence M. And uh, while Luigi. Executioner by Zelenia. All right, let's go to the Architects. So first up we have FDB. Uh, kind of also, it has a very like Final Fantasy Tactics vibe to this one too, in my opinion. Um, but I like the Squire Mario. I like the little white mage. 
Actually, it just feels like Final Fantasy. Oh, the little knight. So those were very nice little designs. Um, Sabi had this very kind of nice armor for Luigi. Doesn't get enough love. A lot of a lot of Bowser dragons. That was definitely a theme. So we all had this one. Uh, I like the little question question mark box. I think that's because I suggested it. Now you may notice if you're a giant nerd like me um, that there is a Nico Bolas theme going on here. This is Nico Bolas Bowser. Um, that's fun. Nikitty went all out with this full illustration, uh, so that's cool. And uh, Overgang. Finally, bringing in the love for Waluigi. A giant knight Waluigi. Got the little flower on the shoulder. All that good stuff. I love it. Franco had the jester Waluigi. Also good. Um, so, once at this point, you know, all the entries are just great. Um, I decided to give the strike to Wiao. Um, not that it was, you know, bad, just design wise. Um, it had some minor issues in the neck and showing the forms, and I feel like some of the other designs were a bit more unique. Um, it was good, though. I did like the Nico Bolas thing, but yeah, it's tricky. It's getting trickier and trickier. Um, but that is the first 30. We're up to 30. Let's actually just take a little break, stretch out a bit. You doing good? This is a long video, everyone. I know, I'm not really trying to pad it out, but man, that's a lot of repeated content just coming at you. So, you know, it's always good to take a little break, stretch a little bit, do something fun. I feel like since this is just gonna be the final like five or six assignments, um, let's actually get some stronger dramatic lighting in here. Let me see what I can do. Uh, let's see. Ooh, okay, how's that everyone? We got the subsurface scattering. Gotta pull the ears out. Um, feels, feels nice and a little more dramatic in here. So I think we'll I think we'll go with that. Wish I could do something crazier with the hair. Uh, I don't know. All right, <clears throat> let's get in here. All right, we are getting ready to make our run at the finals. Look at this. Every every movement of the arm feels like dramatic lighting. Feel feels good. Before we get to them, though, uh, let's actually just take a look back at some of the random chaos that's taken place in this little discord over the course of this challenge. So one thing you should know about all of these assignments so far is uh, there happens to be a person named Red Raven. They decided to make it their goal to be the fastest at every assignment. So every single day for the entire event, Red Raven would just post the quickest most rushed interpretation of whatever the theme was that day. It was, it started to become something delightful to just look forward to every midnight when the new, when the new challenge got announced. Um, so thank you, Red Raven. Of course we were, that wasn't our only nonsense. Uh, there was also the invasion of the strawberries. What does it mean? Why? Why strawberries? I don't know. What is this? Thing. And why is it all over my Discord? They also managed to find an old picture of me from my angsty teenage years and turn me into a little strawberry. So, yeah, I mean, sure, why not? You know, good times for everyone. Obviously, uh, a Med's little dinosaur version of me went over really well, so much so that we had to deal with seeing this little guy just pop up everywhere. Look, everyone, it's Sonic's the dinosaur. So that's, you know, always a delightful meme when you get to see yourself as a little Sonic character. Aside from strawberries and Sonics, um, the main thing was just monochroma. Um, so we had cr Chroma Core, all of the cadets, they were in their top part, um, but all of the all of the people that were left out decided to form their own little group called Monochroma. I'm glad they had something to belong to. <laughs> anyway, so there's a lot of nonsense and uh, good times, but uh, okay, I I'm ready. I'm ready. Enough, enough of this slow rolling. Uh, let's just hop into the final group of challenges. Anyway, 
Number 31 is another environment challenge. And this time the prompt was the imperial courtyard of the feudal meat kingdom. So yes, I just wanted some feudal meat kingdom courtyard, whatever that may mean to you. Uh, let's see what it meant to the monochroma follow alongs. So we have this lovely uh, little T-bone steak garden by Esca Spade. Um, this is a pretty much more so what I kind of maybe had in mind by Evil Ramen. Um, and we got this one by Mia Tai, which actually I was kind of thinking about like grilled meat everywhere and fires and little little meat things going on. But yeah, let's let's just see how these final six cadets are faring. So right away, uh, FDB coming out of the gate. This. This feels very uncomfortable, but it looks, it's so much like weird tendon and meat, and it does feel like the meat kingdom. So that one is just awesome. I love it. Uh, this one by Franco, it's, it's a little awkward compositionally, but look at these adorable little meatballs and meat people. All the, <laughs> all the little meats, they're just so happy. Uh, I have this one by Asabi, little pepperoni roofs and meat walls. Um, yeah, it's, it's a little awkward compositionally as well, but you know, that's a thing. Nikki had the, the rain of pepper coming down. Ooh, I gotta get the lighting in there. The rain of pepper, um, which absolutely looks delightful. And I love this one. I love the little flames. Uh, so that was very good. Overgang with the carnitas. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's more of a happy meat kingdom. This feels like a less doom and gloom and more like, let's all just eat a bunch of meat. And then we have Weow with this kind of, what's a little creepy, a little dark of a meat kingdom. I mean, I guess meat is somewhat dark in, in concept and in theory. Uh, yeah, it can, it can be pretty dark. Um, but anyway, I had to give the strike this time to Sabi. It was just a little bit flatter than the rest. Um, and yeah, it, it just, it's just a little rough. Now, for whatever reason, I swear this wasn't planned, but at this point, every single person has two strikes. There are six people left. That means there's only gonna be five more challenges. We know it, and then it will be over. So let's go in. Assignment number 32. So I wanted to actually go back to creatures uh, one last time. And I know I love the Pokemon theme so much. It, it was really one of my favorites. So I decided to let people redesign one of their favorite comic book characters, whatever comic book uh, they want, as a Pokemon. So I want them to take a person and kind of reinterpret them in the Pokemon world as a Pokemon. Uh, so let's see how the follow alongs did with that one. All right, this one by Al Desari is an absolute delight. They even have the little evolutions and I just love it. Um, really great job with this one. Uh, we also had, oops, let me just go over here. A little Iron Man one that also very cute. Um, yeah, sure, why not? Junji, Ito, I mean, I guess it could be the one lady who gets sucked into a spiral. I guess that could be one of your favorite comic book characters. Um, but that's just terrifying, but great. <laughs> uh, this one was by K. I I believe it's Tokyo Ghoul. I don't know, I'm not super familiar with that. Um, but it's pretty good. We had Lil, Lil Rockley. <laughs> that one just makes me smile. By Mia Tai. Um, little Guts, Little Guts one by Shrimp. Technically, Guts already has like a dog version of himself, so, you know. But here's a little Spider-Man. That's adorable too. Um, so some good stuff going on in there. I really liked Elder Series. That was like, nailed the prompt. Exactly what I was hoping for. Ah, so now it's time to see which cadet gets knocked out this time. All right, so this is gonna be very tricky and painful for all of these final assignments. Uh, we have this one by uh, FDB. Um, once again, great rendering, great lighting, great presentation. Uh, this design by Overgang, you know, a little Hellboy there. Uh, Lucifer by Sabi, also a nice Pokemon design. Uh, we out with the Doctor Strange. I really like that one. I like all the, the wings and stuff. It feels like a legendary Pokemon. 
um, just by happenstance, another little Hellboy one um, by Franco. And then this one by Nick Kitty, which is, what's his name? I don't know, that My Hero Academia character. I'm not, wait, does it say Kachan? Okay. Well, I've seen that, but um, overall, uh, this one was probably the most like, ooh, controversial, maybe painful. But when I look through each of them, I feel like design-wise, and I don't want to get too hung up on the rendering because FDB had great rendering, but I felt like design-wise, these all felt a little bit more like actual kind of interpretations of comic book characters as Pokemon. And I feel like the actual creature design, which is what the prompt was for this spider man one what's this has felt a little bit weaker to me so um yeah controversy be all over the place on this one but i decided to get rid of fdb which was rough you know is this the design thing i was like can i justify this one being a better pokemon than the rest and i'm like i don't know i like these other pokemon designs a little bit better they feel a little bit more believable um fdb is awesome so be sure to check out their work whenever you can. I think I'll just post a link to all of the cadets and their social medias in the description. Um, so be sure to check them out when the video is over and all of that stuff. Uh, anyway, let's move on. Assignment number 33. So we only have five people left. I decided to go with, um, I don't know what to call this, some kind of environmental agricultural prompt because uh, we hadn't quite done it like something like that. So I gave them the prompt of a lightning berry tree. Um, so let's see how the follow-alongs handled it. This definitely feels like a lightning tree by Evil Ramen. Um, and FDB sadly joining the follow-alongs, but I'm delighted to still see the work. Um, so FDB decided to carry on and make sure they did each and every assignment up until the end as well. Uh, so there's a great one by FDB. Uh, here's one by Frost and one by Red Raven, who I talked about recently. But I love this idea of this just upside down little lightning trees coming out. Yeah, it's, it's, a, good, it's a good idea. Uh, let's see which cadet we lose today. All right, so uh, we have, like I said, we only have five. Uh, we have this one by Overgang, um, which, you know, looks pretty typical Overgang style, but not too bad. Uh, I like this one by Sabi, this lightning tree with these little berries near the bottom, kind of orange foliage, um, weird kind of fiery effects going on inside it. Uh, this one by Franco, uh, maybe, you know, a little, it looks a little muddy, a little sludgy, um, but not too bad. It just kind of has this lure thing that it uses to catch apparently little cute monkeys. Um, we out absolutely killing it on this one. I love this little upside down tornado tree berry thing. Um, really great stuff there. I love that one. Probably my favorite of this little challenge. Uh, and then we had Nikki's, um, yeah, which is good, solid. Uh, could have could have had a little more shape uh, appeal going on in some of the designs. Um, but yeah, a lot of good stuff. So uh, the person I had to give the strike to on this one was Franco. So Franco was my, I was rooting for him since the start. He comes from my Patreon server. Really enjoyed seeing him in here. Uh, but I feel like this design just wasn't as interesting or fitting of the theme uh, like some of the other ones were. Like, I don't know if I would have picked up on this one being lightning themed uh, just from the design. But yeah, it's down to four now. Let's check out the next assignment. All right, assignment number 34 uh, was one that I had the idea for very early on, but um, I had to wait for the end for it because uh, the prompt is to take two of your previously designed either characters or creatures and pit them against each other in some epic compositional battle uh, between them. So a little bit of a fun throwback to some of the older pieces um, and I thought that would just be nice to kind of to kind of see a repeat of some of those older designs. So first, let's see what the follow alongs did. All right, Escaspade decided to use both of their designs from the two Pokemon themed challenges. Um, so that's not bad. 
FDB also going for the Pokemon, the little spider guy. Uh, but with Smelfer, the frog cat from very, very early on, weeks in the past. Great composition, though. Great job at, you know, kind of creating that dynamic uh, composition between the two. It feels like it could be a cover for a comic. So awesome. Once again, by FDB. Uh, we have this one by Frost with their Elephant Valkyrie. And I believe this was a true omen finding a friend, actually. Uh, and this one, I think that was a snail dragon. And uh, I, don't know, I can't remember everything. Uh, but that's by Poft Art. So great job. Let's go check out once again which cadet we're going to lose this time. So let's see. It looks like we got Nikitty bringing back the Takoyaki Wizard and Smelfer uh, for some, once again, wonderful lighting, great composition, and I love the dynamic between the two. Um, so really, really captured a great combination with those two characters. Uh, love that piece. We had uh, Overgang bringing back the Dragon Snail and the Valkyrie. Um, a little, some compositional issues are kind of arising with the uh, foreground character mostly. The, these shapes aren't necessarily leading into it as well as they could. Um, and we had Sabi, once again, great secondary character. Uh, the, the main, or uh, I should say the foreground character has, has a couple issues as well, compositionally. Um, so, and then we had Weow bringing out, uh, some more interesting stuff. Um, so super dynamic with the composition. This guy could be a little bit better, um, but, uh, it's still very, very dynamic. Uh, so this was, once again, super tough, super painful. We just have these four people. And um, obviously Overgang and Sabi, uh, they have the same composition as you can kind of see here. Um, so the question was, which one was more dynamic and interesting? Uh, because that was really what it was about. It was about dynamic composition. That's what the prompt was. Um, so I feel like, you know, being similar, um, it could have gone really either way. I think I just kind of, Mm, you know, it still feels like it could go either way. Um, but yeah, I decided to give the strike to Sabi, um, and I feel like it wasn't quite as ambitious as the other one. Maybe maybe it's just the colors and everything making it feel more ambitious. I don't know. Um, but the other one just feels a little bit more ambitious, uh, especially when you see them as just thumbnails. I think the use of more background value and stuff goes a long way. I was super sad to see Sabi go, because Sabi's like uh, one of our, like our little mascot in there, in the little cadet core. That's it, we have a final three now. We have Nikitty, Overgang, and Weow in the final three. That means two more competitions left. Let's wrap them up. So the the second to last the penultimate assignment number 35 this is going to be another throwback to some of the lore created in the server for a for our nice little penultimate assignment so the prompt was a monochroma cadet steals the chroma core loot box and is running off with it um so obviously monochroma was our was our little rivals throughout this whole thing all of those failed cadets in the washout alley just kind of trying to pick away at the chroma core but they they've stolen one of our chroma core loot boxes so they had to design both the loot box and the monochroma cadet uh, so let's see how the follow-alongs did all right we got this cute little entry once again by aldeseri i like the little simple chroma core loot box and we have this one by de half one of our old original cadets so it's nice to see that it looks like they stole true omens surfboard as well so i like that it's obviously just the half's character turned evil they've converted to monochroma um, but they were once a cadet and uh then we got this little little one by s spain very cute and finally oh no fdb with this entry and you can see sabi has has turned on the cadets now that they are no longer a cadet and they've washed out um, I think this is meant to be Sabi. They're, they're turning on the cadets. They're, they're trying to steal the Chroma Core treasure. Yeah, let's see 
which cadet survives so here we go we have a nikitty with this a uh, little little traditional looking monochromic cadet stealing this one got the laser grid um pretty pretty traditional and standard in terms of idea but it's well done of course uh overgang had this one um i feel like some of the posing gets a little little awkward you know you got like the both arm and leg kind of matching um does does some weird stuff which is strangely enough now that i think of it the same problem that overgang had in his last piece with posing characters and having the silhouette shapes do matching things in different parts um so interesting pay attention to that overgang and then we had we with this very villainous looking monochroma cadet stealing our little treasure here um so yeah i had to give the strike this time to overgang um once again just had some issues with the posing especially in the silhouette stuff you gotta just kind of read the silhouettes squint your eyes if you need to um, get a good feel for them uh, but that's you know that's how it crumbles down so we have nikitty and weo in the grand where's my lighting the grand finale so um it came down to these two and um oh man i don't think you need me to actually uh deliver the explanation and the prompt for this finale battle instead i'm actually going to turn it over to ahmed who has made a video prompt for this finale Yes. Awaken, for your true journey calls upon you. Let go the comforting embrace. Be adrift in this eternal place. Here, where no light shines, a landscape truly of endless time. The Iron Gate lies before you. Go on, step forth and open it. Yes, you couldn't have imagined this, could you? You now find yourself upon a dreamscape of endless night. Between the waking world and the land of sleep there lies the in-between, where you stand now, entranced upon a cobblestone path. The wind howls its envy of the sky, fireflies fly and straight ahead, a wondrously grand tree of colors the world will never see. Its branches shimmering and dancing to a tune only it can hear. A red raven perched upon a branch, eyes glowing with a faint hint of lost memories. At the base of the tree, serpents and snakes waiting in the shadows to happen upon a witless soul to be dragged into the spider lair, a vast chasm where none can escape. But the strangest of all, the sky. Above the swirling clouds, these stars are not familiar to you. The seven moons shine down their eternal grace, forgotten, sadly, by the stars themselves, one moon full and the others not. If only you had some way to show the people of your world what this place looks like. Go on, go forth, whereupon you shall rise beyond the fallen. The quest falls to you, my friends. It is time. Rise to your grand finale. Go on, 
This is it, Chroma Core. Muster all that you are, all that you were. Bring the true omen of life into fruition. Go. So that was quite an epic prompt, and um, yeah, a lot of interesting descriptive stuff going on. Obviously, it's an environment. Um, so we had FDB wrapping things up, doing the full 36 assignments. Uh, big congrats to FDB. You made it all 36 days in a row. Um, and that is, once again, an awesome piece. So just great job by FDB. Uh, we also had this image by Frost. Um, nice, nice looking image. Captures all the weird stuff in the prompt. The seven moons, the red raven, uh, the, the snake and the tree and the, all that stuff. And we had this more graphic interpretation by Strivek that I also really enjoyed. It looked like it could just be like a cool book cover. Yeah, that's, it's crazy. It's the finale. We gotta, we gotta see. What do you guys think is gonna happen? Which cadet is going to make it? Let's just check it out. All right, so moments before midnight. I was kind of worried. I thought maybe neither of them was, they were both gonna quit on the last day and I wouldn't have anything. Uh, but moments before the finale ended, um, they decided to start posting a little bit, prepare for travel and make it double. And then this, a video entry, you say, for the last finale? Um, let's take a quick look at it. Go on, step forth and open it. Yes, you couldn't have imagined this, could you? So, in a surprising twist, they decided to collab on the finale, which means I technically can't disqualify anyone or get rid of anyone because they both worked on this. They basically tricked me. I feel sabotaged. I feel betrayed. Um, I can't bring it down to just one person. Um, but nonetheless, you know, it's it's been a, a long run and I'm just gonna let them have it. I mean, not without sweating. At first I told them that Sabi was still in it and uh, that their entry was gonna be the one that won. But no, 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 it's fine. It, it's all good. Um, here you can see an image of their piece here. Um, so yeah, Nikki and Weow decided to take the um, friendly collusion approach to the finale in the spirit of Chromacore and all the friends we made along the way, I guess it's a fitting end. Um, because, you know, it's not like there was a grand prize. No one was getting some giant uh, sports car. Why would you want a giant sports car anyway? Or <laughs> anything fancy. It was just for fun, just for community, just for the excitement and motivation of it all. Uh, nonetheless, I sent Nikitty a Ikea shark because, you know, why not? And I'll get Weow something. He just lives in a difficult uh, place to send stuff to, but we'll figure it out. Don't worry. Um, so, yeah, I just want to give... I know it might feel a little anticlimactic, but it, it's, it really is a fitting end. And I want to give a big, you know, just amount of praise toward Nikitty and Weow for making it the full 36 weeks and uh, becoming Chroma Core members, I guess. They're officially in the Chroma Core. They've made it through the boot camp, and now they're Chroma Core people for whatever it's worth. Um, so it was such a great time. Um, and yeah, I guess it kind of just devolved into cat pics and stuff at the end. Uh, but that's fine. You know, that's every Discord before it shuts down should just be all cat pictures anyway. So, you know, look at all that stuff. And uh, yeah, it was great. So that's pretty much it. We made it, everyone. I know that was a lot of me saying, hey, let's check out the follow-ons. Ah, what are the cadets doing? 36 times in a row. But um, it was an exciting month and a half of a contest. And I, I loved it. It was great. 
it was I I strongly encourage you all to participate next year because there will be a next year and I've got plenty of interesting twists and turns and surprises for next year's competition uh, but that won't be till like July of next year so you got a long 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 time to think about it uh, but anyway I absolutely love everyone that joined in and participated whether it was just you know chatting and following along or you know the cadets that just made everything special and magical and as if that wasn't enough uh, the cadets decided to get together after the fact and make this lovely lovely commemorative image of all of them so Oh, it's, it's so great. So initially, my whole goal for it was to feel like a summer camp. You know, obviously with uh, COVID and everything, we can't really go many places, but I wanted it to feel like a little tiny summer camp that only lasts for a little pocket of time and then it's over, which is why I kind of ended the server. Um, and I, I just love that vibe and I feel like it really, you know, just makes it more memorable and just, you know, really captures that wholesome um, kind of feeling and I hope you enjoyed this giant giant look back this huge video Maybe you saw some of your work in there. I just want to thank everyone So much that participated in any way uh, all of my guest artists and uh, yeah, just a big big um, Appreciation once again, this was all about just 500k subscribers um, So, you know, you guys made it happen um, and I love my community and it's wonderful and yeah, just nothing but positive thoughts here. Um, so thank you so much and a big thank you to the patrons who make this channel just possible with all of their continued support. Um, they've really kept things alive over these, you know, past five years, however long we've been going on Patreon and everything. In the meantime, I will get back to my regular videos. Maybe we'll do something regarding next. Maybe something else with anatomy. Maybe something on painting. Um, I got a lot of stuff planned, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, so thank you all once again. I will see you all in the near future. Goodbye.